They I'm, are I'm evil. Not your, They're murderers, you know, and I think it's okay to tell people that. If that makes them go out and buy guns and ammo and prepare for a day where they try to enact that genocide, then all better for it. Jesus Christ! Kill them, and then he pauses for a long time. It was like socially, you know, politically, um, and they wants to. The Republican Party, the modern Republican Party, wants to personally murder every minority that lives within the border of the country. And then, that, did he really say that verbatim? There might be clashes between state guard or police. You know, some what? police might try to. Can you? Can we please? There were like those Patriot Prayer dumb fucks rolling their, you know, sixty thousand dollar trucks through like urban neighborhoods with a bunch of guys with guns in the pickup trucks. When that happens, I want people to be able to take shots at them from apartment windows. Take shit, they weren't sh there's no, if you wanna drive around with guns, you have the right to do that in the United States, even during protests. What do you mean you want people shooting at them for doing it? Be treating Republicans as what they actually are, evil and immediately threatening. 30% mm -hmm. of Republicans believe that violence might be necessary to fix the direction the country is on. I'm sure there are far fewer liberals as a percentage who would believe that. If I am to be one of the left-leaning people who will openly advocate for that, then let me be that person. I don't think there's enough evidence to prove to people then you're the a right stooge. is planning to oh, kill people. We should be able to be able to dude, Vosh is ready to hang and up. Oh my me, god. Like, I've been a follower of you for a while, and so, you know, when you say something just so absurd, I had to reach out. Oh my god. Right. Uh, remind me what it was that I said that's so absurd. Fill me in. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so... Obviously, I, I get that the tension's running high with the Roe v. Wade news. Uh, I'm what the kids call a sock dim, so with you on most issues, but obviously down the road we would maybe disagree. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So actually on the policy prescriptions, we would agree on mm -hmm. the conversation around abortion, but mm -hmm. the way in which you obviously responded to that news was calling Republicans, and then you went on to specify Republican politicians, maybe primarily... Uh, were demons and human flesh. Mm -hmm. And I saw that- mm -hmm. uh, Which is medically true, by the way. Scientific studies have been done. Right, I brought all the studies to, um, you know, fight you on that. And <laughs> I saw that you talked to a conservative and I saw the title and got nervous that he was going to argue with you about this exact same thing. But then y'all's conversation went more into him saying, ah, it's not that bad, all these different things. That's not where I want to go at all. I agree with you on how bad any of these given issues. I mean, the fact that you would be pro-life, quote unquote, um, wanting to minimize abortions, but then also want to ban con uh, contraception. Makes no sense. Not saying I defend or y'all got into the conversation around um, the demonization of trans people and all that. None yeah. of those things was, am I going to be like, oh, don't, don't call them evil because it's not that bad. That's not my point at all. It was definitely uh, a bit tangential. Oh, by the way, there are people in chat asking for your name and pronouns, just to be clear. Yeah, uh, Luke Beasley, and pronouns are he, him. All right, uh, thank you, but yeah, go on, go on right ahead. Um, absolutely, so... Dodge! I, I guess Fuck. I'm not trying to kind of, oh my god, look at all these quotes, but I did write them down, just so we could kind of hash them out. Mm -hmm. And my biggest concern is... What does it do for our movement using that type of rhetoric? For, instead of um, us arguing on if Republicans are evil or not, because that's kind of a pointless conversation in my mind, mm -hmm. more so it's, is it a good strategy to be calling them that um, for our own movement? So you kind of feel like that's good? Agree uh, to that? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I think we're I think we're rapidly reaching the point where our ability to uh, achieve our political goals is going to come down to convincing liberals, like yourself, um, that this is no longer a political conflict which can be won exclusively through, you know, um, tr traditional institutionalist political discourse. Isn't that exactly how Republicans won it though? Through traditional institutions through voting in a president who was able to put in a lot of Supreme Court justices that agreed with them? Isn't that kind of exact, isn't that, now I know you're trying to say that we can't do that, but isn't that exactly what happened? Isn't that literally exactly what happened? Kind of, sort of, maybe. Of course, because the Democratic Party isn't really willing or able to operate as an effective agent of change on our behalf. Um, instead, that we need to be preparing for more dire civil conflict. Uh, and in so doing, we need these, the stakes to be understood fully.
uh, which you know. okay, you have to be so. One thing I will agree with Lauren on, and actually, correction, the one thing she agrees with me on, because I brought this point up first, okay? You can't really be super like, oh, like, soy, like, Republicans say they should, blah, 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 and give Vosh a pass on this. Vosh is, Vosh is just as bad, if probably worse, actually. Vosh is probably worse than Tucker Carlson here, in terms of, like, his calls for violence. At the very least, Tucker Carlson will kind of hide it or mask it with some level of plausible deniability, if you want to be very naive. But Vosh is, like, pretty blatant here. It's a little bit silly. Now, obviously, I want to impress upon my audience, and I do fully believe that. Yeah, so one of the things that bothers me whenever I hear people talking about, we can't keep going with what we're doing and the lack of action for my current Democratic Party is proof that anything other than kind of dramatic, dramatic, maybe revolutionary type um, actions isn't gonna work. And they'll say like, uh, an example of this is that's outside the conversation we're having is people will be saying, oh, they've been saying reform the police for ages and nothing's happened. That's why we have to completely abolish the police or something. And to me, it's like, yeah, but they've been saying that and, and we've never gotten people in office or at least enough of them who are actually going to try to reform the police. So it's the same thing um, with this, where you're saying we're, we're past the point. We've seen time and time again, this isn't your wording, but the Democratic Party or the left in this country tries a certain strategy while the right goes further and further um, right. And it just doesn't work. And to me, bro, this class an sucks. actual I don't like the progressive rifle, movement that doesn't go all the way to kind of like violent rhetoric could dramatically change the political landscape and bring over a lot of the quote unquote moderates or center rightish people who don't want to uh murder people right and uh <laughs> so let's so yeah. let's let's hone in on this um you talk about um nonviolent rhetoric okay so I'm a, I'm a big advocate for defensive violence here. Uh, um, I do mm -hmm. think we're in the preliminary stages of a genocide. <laughs> what? I, what do you mean by that, Vouch? Vouch, I'm gonna need you to, I'm gonna need you to clarify a little bit, buddy, because you sound a little bit fucking unhinged right now. Okay, that sounded a little bit unhinged. It's queer people in particular, but probably adjacent groups as well. Uh, and in such an environment, I think it is politically irresponsible to uh, treat the agents of that genocide with anything other than the greatest possible degree of moral condemnation. So, like, this... Okay, so again, I'm not... Fuck, it sounds like I'm simping for Lauren, but I'm not, okay? Oh, I had a big fight with her last night. Go watch it in case you think I'm simping for her, okay? But, like, if we're going to read into, like, things like her Great Replacement video, right? Actually, well, maybe no one's even arguing this. You all agree that, like, Vosh sounds fucking deranged here, right? This is, like... Am I, I'm not losing my mind, right? This is, like, insane. See, there are historical examples of your strategy not working. Usually when fascist governments begin to take power... Also, again, I'm gonna say this a million times. Stop saying fascist. Stop saying fascist. Truly in history, there have been, like, three. Okay? This is like the... Fascism is like this biggest boogeyman in the universe. Okay? Stop saying... Fat, when are these fascists... Go Bro, there have been, like... Less, there's been like three in all of human history, okay? Stop saying fascist governments. Stop saying this, okay? It is so fucking cringe. Jesus Christ. There is a outspoken liberal contingent that mocks, downplays, attempts to civilly reason with, pull people over, and then of course, invariably, they're silenced or killed. The fascists take power uh, anyway, because people just seem to be more responsive to alarmist rhetoric, you know? Um, yeah, I'm, but I'm not talking at all about uh, minimizing or standing by. There's a difference between being, you could be super alarmist. This is so dangerous without saying, this is a class of people that is, and just so you know, I'm not like morally horrified. Oh my God, he called them. I'm literally just thinking from a strategy point of view. Um, without setting a group of people into a non-human category, because I feel like I've heard you talk about this on stream before, even with people like Nazis, if we say, okay, they're monsters, they're not human, they're, 
something different, then we're not, yeah, I definitely have heard you talk about this, um, then we're not able to understand, okay, how do they get there? How could we take them out of it? Or how could we even fight them? I don't think Vosh is interested in that center leaning audience anymore, right? Especially since our huge divergence. I think he's just trying to capture, I think Vosh is trying to appeal to and capture radicals. I think that's all he cares about anymore. And that's where, that's what his rhetoric is going to reflect that. Dude, I hate the rifle guy. Ugh. Don't really know how to conceptualize a fight against an inhuman monster. I agree with can, that from an yeah. analytical perspective when we're talking about average people, not so much when we're talking about politicians, you know. There, for instance, there's a difference between some random 16-year-old neo-Nazi and Nick Fuentes, in that Nick Fuentes not only perpetuates the system, but actively benefits from his participation in it. Same with the Republican politicians, you know. Um, I think that oftentimes pulling people out of very like far right movements is about helping them understand they've been duped, misled, their life is being harmed. But for these people, their life isn't being harmed. Matt Gates's life is not being worsened by being a fascist in power. It's benefited significantly. Gates is a fascist? So at that point, it's okay. no longer a matter of convincing them or moving them away. It's a matter of fomenting a suitable degree of political opposition, which obviously I believe is uh, farther than what you might believe it needs to be. The crazy thing, though, about this new uh, sect of the Republican Party, this we think of as the more fascistic, far, far right um, kind of category, is they are very much, not on some things, they're still very pro-corporate a lot of times, stuff like that. But in the areas where, that they really define them, they're actually representing a lot of their base very well. Yes. And so in a democracy- Destiny pill. They're just very clearly self-interested politicians who are seeing a increasingly radicalized base that wants to get meat to, thrown to them all the time, um, calling for that and they, they answer. And so it's not like, uh, to me, someone who's evil and kind of what you were talking about in your video that I'm responding to, was, listen, we can reason and understand people when they're doing it for their own gain, but we can't understand people when it's literally just to make somebody suffer. And in the case of the politicians like Mac H that you're talking about, it's not just to make people suffer, it is making people suffer and it's horrible, but it's out of complete self-interest, as you just said. He's benefiting from his base loving him because he's doing all these radical actions. And I think if you're willing to accept that the voters aren't just, uh, you know, demons and human flesh. Well, then the politicians aren't really either, just really self-interested people looking in terms to of, uh, stay in office. In terms of their moral, uh, you know, how I would judge them morally, I can't say there would be that much of a difference. The only difference is how you can treat them in terms of what approaches are politically efficacious. And I always think that it's more acceptable to take hardline uh, stances against people in power than uh, you know, just random citizens, even if they have the same political positions. Also, of course, even the farthest right random Republican dipshits can potentially be convinced out of their positions. You can't convince a politician out of their positions. Right, their but, whole but politicians literally change and adapt based on how their voter bases are changing and adapting. It's literally something that politicians do. It's a really important part of being a politician is being like, fuck, even Hillary Clinton got bullied into 15 an hour on the um, trail by Bernie Sanders. Like, how can you say that you can't make politicians change their mind on anything? Like, what do you think politicians do all that? Why do you think they're so fucking obsessed with figuring out like where their constituents are at? or figuring out like where the Overton window is or figuring out what they're like where people like yeah yeah that just doesn't make any sense that's this is how politicians function God. Jesus didn't get didn't wasn't Obama technically bullied into accepting gay stuff quicker um because of Biden like accidentally kind of doing it early <laughs> like what didn't I feel like it's a big thing for um the Obama administration like to do the things that they say they're going to do you can't debate them out of that Right, but if someone's listening to you walk them through, okay, these people, picture them, are demons in human flesh, then it stops there. Like, if I'm running down that logic train and I'm thinking, okay, this is the person that I fully trust, I would stop the analysis there because if someone is truly purely evil, they're just Satan, then they're just trying to harm people, and I can't really understand how do we combat them because they're just going, going, going. But if True. you understand that they're just trying to represent a, a radical uh, base, and then you also understand that the best thing you can do to um, change the radical base's mind is not address them in such a way, then 
the goal. Now you have an, an actual. I think you're conflating a, a few to, things. There's no nothing mutually exclusive there. You can say a person is evil while also recognizing there are socioeconomic justifications for their behavior. Evil is but not, really a, not the analysis that you had. It was just like. That's well, it. Game at no over. Point, we can't pull them out of it. But at we totally no can't pull voters I, out of it. I've never made this an intrinsic thing. When you call somebody evil, this guy needs more philosophy terms to deal with Vosh's like horrible understanding of philosophy. When you call somebody evil, you're essentializing them to some extent. It's very rare that you'd say like, that guy's evil. Damn, you're saying he can't be changed? No, 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 I just mean like he does evil things. There's a difference between saying something, somebody does bad actions versus saying they are evil. When you call somebody evil, they don't really sound very, uh, they don't sound redeemable because they're, they're fucking evil. <laughs> you, can't, you can't redeem an evil person, they're evil, right? Like that's it, that's the end of the conversation. Th this kid is correct to point that out. This isn't like people being born evil. Well, yeah, Maybe you could course. say it's their job to be evil. But even evil isn't like a real moral category. The closest thing that I could really- What do you mean evil is not a- What is evil if not like a moral statement or category? What does that- What does he mean by that? Come up to it, you know, outside of rhetorical shorthand is um, the axioms that they are attempting to maximize with their behavior are in stark contradiction to the outcomes of the axioms that I would like to put about. So, for example, okay. if they're fascists and they believe in a fundamental sense, you know, um, the, in, in rigid hierarchy and the promotion of like an anti degenerate social order, that would starkly contradict with any invocation of my axioms because it would entail genocide against queer people. So in that sense, you know, you might say, well, evil is a shorthand. The long form would be that their axiomatic outcomes are uh, mutually uh, exclusive to, to mine. You know, they contradict. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like I liked um, I like learning philosophy because I feel like it helped me understand uh, some of my more fundamental positions better. I feel like Vosh learned philosophy to avoid answering as many tough questions as possible. <laughs> Do you think they're evil? <laughs> well, <laughs> is anybody truly evil? Or is evil just the evocation of somebody's normative system failing to apply a meta-ethical standard that I would hold to be different than they? Like... <laughs> Okay, you're what? Can you talk to me like a fucking human? I understand what you're saying, but it all is a rhetoric game. And if you take someone who's, um, I have a, a few friends who I would say are from center left, center and center right, kind of all around that little spectrum. And watching their engagement with politics is super interesting because I got in a conversation about- Yes, that is true. So if you're listening closely, technically, Vosh is just defining evil as people with different positions than him. That's re really, at the end of the day, that's all he's saying. Evil is somebody with just different meta-ethics than me, different understandings of what they believe to be good or bad. That's really all he's saying, which is interesting. But. Abortion with a, a family member. And afterwards, she was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I, I still feel like I'm pro-life. I don't know if I agree with you, but that actually makes a lot of sense. Like it's about- all the reasons we say about autonomy, the uh, baby or to be baby, the fetus being biologically dependent on the mother, so then she has right over it. Uh, and she had not even heard that explanation laid out for her anywhere. And so I'm picturing her being like, gosh, the right wing's pretty crazy. And she flips over, okay, maybe not this person, but someone who's younger flips over to uh, your channel. And your response to the news is not, oh, we really got to deprogram people, but they're evil. The leaders of this movement are just fundamental, or I don't know how exactly. No, yeah, yeah, let's see. They're just evil, fundamentally evil, not human beings. I feel um, like and she's gonna go like, "Wow, okay, that's definitely radical too." And then we have a bunch of people who are just status quo, uh, excite, you know, all super excited about the status quo. I feel like the because uh, everything else is radical. What you're talking about right now is kind of like the liberal myth, like the starry-eyed dream. If this was the case, My why has none? Bad. Why has none of the moderate or like center leaning or bipartisan messaging of the Democratic Party brought over anyone? Republicans exactly, were as galvanized. Okay, firstly, we I need to put together I'm not going to. Somebody might say we can do it. Or maybe I'm wrong. Like 
I'm pretty sure the goal of both parties and whether or not you win or lose elections has been bringing over moderates. That's how you win elections. There is this weird rumor that I guess, I don't wanna say it started with Bernie Sanders, but it definitely got popular. There's this weird rumor that the way that you win elections is by exciting a voter base that doesn't normally vote to go out and vote. That's not, that's not the case, it doesn't work. People have tried this over and over and over again, and it does not work. This idea that like, we're gonna get these guys that never vote to come out and vote, fine, we're gonna fuck, it doesn't work. They don't vote. There are certain groups of people that just don't vote. They don't vote. And if there is some way to excite them and to get them out voting, we haven't fi figured that out yet. Nobody's figured that out yet. Um, if, if you are, um, if, if you're trying to get people to vote, you're probably aiming more towards the center because that's where most of, of America is. It's just, that just is what it is. Because they they uh, co-opted that language. You understand as much as I do. The quote unquote moderates in Congress slash the Senate, you know, the House and Senate, or even Biden are not actually moderate in the country. They're just more friendly to business interests, more friendly to the status quo, stuff like that. They're not at the center of the country. That brings but them if you closer had, to the middle. Yeah, sorry, go for it. Well, that brings them closer to the middle. It's not like Republicans aren't pro-business and pro-economic elite. They're more so. No, but you Democrats. see in situations like um, West Virginia, you know, we talked about like this a lot with Joe Manchin because people will say, ah, he just has to be conservative because uh, West Virginia is conservative. But then you look at polling, you're like, yeah, they're conservative on a lot of issues, namely uh, social issues, but a lot of economic issues are actually super progressive. So they call themselves moderate to get away with keeping the status quo. But I think the center of the country is very willing to Look, do I'll, some change. That I'll, just be, I'll just be a bit more direct here. Um, Go for it. I think that for interpersonal conversations, it's very important to adopt certain rhetorical approaches to make people feel like they're understood and to address their concerns. I also feel like we're on the precipice of a genocide. And I know looking at history that your uh, approach has been ineffective. It's so cringe, dude. Which you have told the Jews back in 32 in Germany. Can somebody tweet? Can, I, can, you guys need to do better repping me on Twitter because Vosh does this all the time. Can somebody bet Vosh? I'll bet like um, $25,000. I'll donate $25,000 to any LGBTQIA, whatever, fuck, plus, plus, two-spirit organization that he wants if there is a genocide against LGBT people in the next five years. I'll donate 25 grand. And then if there's not, he has to donate 25 grand to like the fucking NRA or something. I don't know. I'd have to pick an org that I actually like. Okay, like, I'll, I'll make this bet with him. If you want to like make stupid fuck, dick, ridiculously dumb fucking claims like this, you should put some fucking money behind it. Otherwise, you're just a bad faith actor trying to profit off of like, this is, you're like literally Rush Limbaugh tier or worse here. Even Rush Limbaugh wasn't this explicit with his rhetoric. Like, I, I somebody needs to force, um, somebody needs to force force Vosh to put some money up for this opinion, because this is ridiculous, dude. That they shouldn't be calling Hitler evil because they may yet convince some moderate-leaning Germans? Of course not. You would understand that past the point, you just need to ferment as much radical opposition as possible. What we're living through right now is an era of unprecedented partisanship, and there just isn't that much evidence to indicate that on a broad scale, we're going to pull the Republican Party apart. The QAnon-believing, January 6th defending, Trump really won the election-believing Republican Party apart. What we can do is socially stigmatize them, and that is an effective form of rhetoric. After the civil rights- Yeah, how could he, he's just, he's, I'm trying to think if he's like intentionally wrong or if it's just um, him being ass mad and do whatever. Like, we know that bullying people doesn't work for anything. It didn't work to make fat people not fat. It didn't work to make people not conservative. Like, people thought this for a long time. This is why a lot of people, including me, thought that somebody like Donald Trump could never win an election. We thought we bullied all of that type of rhetoric away. We thought that those types of people didn't possibly exist in the United States anymore. But guess what? They're still there. All the bullying in the world didn't fucking change any of it. Like, we already learned that what he's saying is absolutely not true. It's not the way to go. You can't just bully a ton of people and assume that you're changing their politics. It just doesn't work that way act was passed and Dr. Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. Uh, most Americans didn't like the man, um, thought he was too radical. We didn't make people and make social life less racist by calmly debating the issue or reaching out or being bipartisan. We did it by shaming. Um, I think it's high time that the perpetrators of a, of a potential genocide be referred to as what they actually are. This liberal hand-wringing has not brought Republicans over to us. Okay, yeah, they I'm, are I'm evil, not your, they're murderers, you know, and I think it's okay to tell people that. If that makes them go out and buy guns and ammo and prepare for a day where they try to enact that genocide, then all better for it. Jesus Christ, bro. We're actually unfucking hinged here.
Holy shit! Guns are already in this country. I would rather okay. them be in the whoa, hands whoa, whoa. of victims Hold than up. victors. Can, yeah, lots of stuff to respond. Uh, first of all, I know in comparison to your language, I'm gonna come off naturally, which I hate, as the pro, uh, like, bipartisan, boring liberal. That's definitely not actually my positions. I am sickened every time I have to hear a person in power, like, get super turned on by the idea of pointless bipartisanship and all the type of stuff. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. There's a big difference between heavy shame and uh, trying to socially stigmatize certain ideologies and understanding as of now, the block of people who truly believe those things like we're talking about right now because of the mass shooting, the great replacement theory, how Tucker Carlson's talked about that and you know, lo and behold, uh, in this guy's manifesto, he's talking about it. And a lot of people believe that, but I think it was like 50% of Republicans think there's some strategy going on to replace voters. Hey, if you're a bored guy that likes to make videos out there, like the Doomer Politics dude or whatever, you should be saving clips like this because if a leftist shooting ever happens, like this is just like a kill shot. Like Vosh's entire career should go up in flames. Like, because th th this is like about as direct a call for violence as you can get without explicitly saying it. Like, And if there's a block of, even not even just the liberals, no, li don't you agree that liberals are a part of our movement? Because otherwise, you're uh -oh. the people you classify as actually uh, a part of the movement that you're a part of is so tiny. Well, they're not part of my if socialist movement, and they can't really be part of an anti-fascist movement either, unless they're actually willing to act on it. Uh oh, but they're not but able I think to act on it. Liberals are the easiest people to bring in. Well, mm, are it's not easy, but. That's what of I'm the trying to do. are going to be the easiest people to bring over into anti-fascism. I agree. Liberals need to be dissuaded of their weird, uh, ahistorical, paternalistic delusion that fascism is something that civility will work us out of. They yeah, need to be buying guns either. and operating militantly. Well, that's okay, what I love to do, by split. the way. Liberals need to be afraid. There should be afraid. We're at the precipice of a very difficult social situation. Their Don't fear you think that needs to be politically incredibly effective. exaggerated. You're, so what? Um, wait, what is? Yeah, the uh, we're about a genocide is about to happen, and we need to all go get guns and that right be ready there is slaughter. why we're not a part of the same group. No, we're literally like if you look at any like lead up to a genocide like charts. Like, Jesus Christ, dude! Do you think it's because he fought with so many? I'm trying to figure out like what what is happening in his brain. Maybe because he fought with so many left leaning groups recently, he feels like he has to be like as insanely extremist as possible in order to like win back the love of some of these people. Or where are you? Like here? this video. This is Alex Jones tier. This video. We're here. We're here. Like. It's not ambiguous. Those charts weren't written by leftists. I mean, we're at the point right now where, you know, um, right-wing media is coordinating to condition their audience to think of all queer people, or even people with colored hair, Jesus, as groomers and pedophiles, which is a clear element of dehumanization, which leads up to legal uh, oppression, which we're getting through uh, currently, right now, unstopping, and following that you know so here's the big the big difference though that is not something that even uh a large portion of everyone who's to the right of of me um believes in fully almost I every single care. person I talk to and if you look at polling but you should care because for a genocide to they don't have be to believe it on the horizon there has to be a you know significant portion of the country that has enough people in power that could uh, make that happen. Wait, they do. Whereas right now, the major vast, vast look at any polling on any LGBTQ issue. Uh, vast, vast majority of America is very not the Weimar, on board with, with the, the Weimar Republic against. was the most progressive place in Europe before the Nazis took over. Republicans <laughs> in 2024 are probably going to have all four branches. Well, three branches, four segments: uh, the presidency, the Senate, Congress, and certainly the courts uh if you don't think they'd be willing to just start you know uh uh uh, uh engaging in full stop legal oppression uh, like their messaging for decades they've been signaling this uh, well, oh, i mean what do you think the lead up is inside? huh it i agree there i mean you look at you know i'm in texas and the law that uh or that greg abbott tried to do of uh classifying gender affirming care for children as child abuse that's legal oppression 100%. It 
Is that what you're talking about? The legal oppression mm, precedes decide? other behavior. Like genocide, okay. it's coming. And it, do you then, sincerely not believe, like, do you think the obsession with degeneracy in America, the belief that there's an effet elite group of liberal or leftist academics that are controlling our children, and the belief, the popular belief that non-whites are being brought into the country um, in order to replace the white population, in tandem with the Republican Party signaling that they're going to attempt another coup if they don't win, but they're probably going to win and hold all houses. This isn't something which you think merits a sufficient degree of alarm on your part? Oh, a hundred percent. I'm a hundred. I mean, look at my own content. There's tons of things to be alarmed about, and it's exactly what you're talking about. But uh, one of the things that I think you did do a very poor job of um, conveying, and okay, let me finish what I'm saying, but then I'm, I have a question as well, was you didn't at all divide until maybe the very end of your video between politicians and, and voters, and then went on to talk about uh, political violence, build our democracy, kill them, and then he pauses for a long time and was like, socially, you know, politically. Um, and they wants to, the Republican Party, the modern Republican Party wants to personally murder every minority that lives within the border of the country. And then, that, did he really say that verbatim? Jesus Christ. Tell people to get guns. To me, that's expediting some sort of huge violent clash between two groups in the country, but not at all. You watched that video? Oh, shit, maybe we did. Squashing the fascistic element of the movement. You squash fascistic movements by winning the violent clashes. What? Hmm. So your political plan it's is just violence. to prepare for war. a civil war and then fight it. I don't know if a civil war is the right I thing. like how he's such a fucking coward that he won't fucking own what he's talking about at least. What a fucking loser. Just say yes. That's what you want. You're waiting for the civil war and you want people to fucking prepare for it. Just say that. Don't be such a little pussy ass bitch and cower away from it so much. Word. There's certainly going to be violence in this country during my lifetime. And if there is going to be violence, then I would prefer the people with the better morals to be the ones who are appropriately armed and prepared. But My right actual now, guess is that there's going to be an increasing divide between red and blue states, and that with control of the federal government, um, Republicans are going to attempt to impose federal law to control the blue states, because they can't control it with state law. Um, blue states, some of them will refuse, and then there might be clashes between state guard or police. You know, some what? police might try to win. Can you? Can we please take bets on this, please? You think this is what's going to happen? So federal laws are going to be made, and then police officers from states are going to be fighting with federal. Can we take bets? I would love to put. I would love to put money on this. Make make this fucking loser actually put money on these insane fucking predictions, please. Or sit, but like others will say, like, no, don't do that. There might be attempts at ousting. Remember during the Black Lives Matter rallies, you know. They were like those Patriot Prayer dumb fucks rolling their, you know, $60,000 trucks through, like, urban neighborhoods with a bunch of guys with guns in the pickup trucks. When that happens, I want people to be able to take shots at them from apartment windows. Take shit? They weren't sh There's no If you want to drive around with guns, you have the right to do that in the United States, even during protests. What do you mean you want people shooting at them for doing it? Jesus Christ! You know, I don't, I don't want them to just be victims here. We have to be ready. Hmm. What state do you live in? You live in the states, right? Texas. Texas, hmm. yeah. And Austin, you better be so buying guns. <laughs> I'm not. It's easy there, ain't it? To me, there's a huge difference. What did you say? It's easy there? Oh, to get a gun, yeah. 100%. Um, the amount of people who are willing to conduct any sort of violence right now as opposed to people who sort of like a person who watched Tucker Carlson is like, oh, I kind of I kind of like this stuff. The Great Replacement Theory. Yeah. But we're not seeing this mass movement of people. Uh, it's still very fringe to me of people who are like, I want to conduct violence. And Doesn't so then for us on to. our side to be like, OK, it's time for us to be getting guns and preparing to uh, shoot each other down the streets. Well, first of all, the right's been doing that for decades. This whole, they're going to, feds are going to take my guns, we better arm up. They've been getting ready for decades, so we got to catch up. Second of all, it doesn't matter if they want to go doing any shooting. You know what's actually going to happen? Police are going to try to do it first, and then they are going to support the police. 
You know, go look at any genocide in recent history, past century. The way you think it plays out ain't how it plays out, you know? It's not like a bunch of people vote or like there's a poll. How many of you want to kill the minorities? And like 50% say yes. And then they go start doing it. You know, there's a... This is another thing where I think that like, I know he would never do it. I feel like some of these guys should be forced to do ride-alongs. Like, like go talk to... like. The average police officer is some dude in a, some fucking rural county. He probably knows like half the people that he's like, depending on where they do their beat on, depending on how big or small their town is. Like cops are not these like unified fascistic elements of of, of society that are just waiting for marching orders from the commissioner to go and like murder their citizens. Like you should go do a ride along, go talk to some police officers because you're actually fucking deranged. Like he, you, you think that like police officers are like the fucking SS, like that they're they're just like waiting, like they check their computer every day to get the marching orders from whatever shadowy dictator is telling them to go and murder whatever minorities are like, holy shit. A creeping assimilation of political power as the right ramps up genocidal messaging against minority groups, accusing them of being the weakness within the country that's tearing them and civilization apart. Um, then you see like uh, right-wing militias acting alongside like police units to enforce unofficial or official legal restrictions against certain minority groups or left-leaning areas. This has happened before. And by the way, that militia group shit's already happened, ain't it? Um, DeSantis recently, didn't he try to form like some Florida His own home. state guard, yeah. Yeah, wonder like what he extra. wanted that for. Yeah, one makes you wonder, right? What after did he want it for? To go and kill all the minorities, Vouch? Is that what DeSantis wanted to do? Was to go and march and murder all the minorities? After an attempted political coup, why would one of the most right-wing governors in the country, maybe the most, who's gunning for president in 24, want essentially a private army? Is Okay, I don't know where all the governors stand, but is DeSantis really the, is he the most right-wing governor in the entire country? Maybe he is, but I don't know. Obviously, it doesn't operate exactly as a private <laughs> army, but, you know, he's played it fast and loose with the rules before. Man, we need guns. And it's defensive, too. I'm not talking about initiating violence. I'm only talking about making sure innocent folks can defend themselves when they come for them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think right now, public opinion is in a place that the way we can defend ourselves from all of that is by grabbing power and being like a fun little movement of online people who scream about uh well no, that's not how i would want to say that uh who's just screaming about preparing for a huge violent clash is not does not have broad appeal and we need broad appeal in our movement to have any chance of getting power one of the people i think about a lot is uh bernie sanders obviously he sort of came out of nowhere in that first run and did pretty well, didn't win obviously. Um, but one of the things that was super notable about him, he definitely conveyed his views. He's definitely very, you know, raises alarm about uh, the anti-democratic stuff with uh, the Republican party, all of that, but comes off and in his rhetoric comes, like he could be a moderate dude. Now, of course the media pretends that he's super radical all the time, but there was a lot of people that I knew who generally were usually saw themselves as the center and they're like, well, oh, Bernie's kind of cool, even though he was the most um, left candidate. And I think if generally as the left, we and online progressives, we adopt messaging that it has broad appeal, we could very, very easily get in power and do the actual uh, foundational things that will prevent Not going to make as many uh, hits on YouTube with that one, my friend. Sorry. Because that's what we need. I'm telling you, a bunch of Voshites fighting against a bunch of like, proud boys, it's just... It could definitely happen in the increasing rhetoric on either side currently, but that's not going to save us from a fascistic takeover. I don't we think definitely you... have to get enough actual political power, and the only way you do that is to have broad appeal in your movement and not just sound like, oh, see, there's radicals on the left and radicals on the left. On I don't right. think... Because our, our policy prescriptions aren't even radical, maybe farther down socialist. So they call us radical uh, either way. Mind. They call Biden people radical. People understand the difference. People call Bernie radical. Exactly, and it didn't work with Biden. They'll call it, you that, but if it lands on people, it's a different thing. True. Republicans have called Biden a communist. I yeah, but think... Biden won the election, Vosh. That's the difference. You can try to say that they called Biden radical, but at the end of the day, Biden was able to actually pass a fucking bill in Congress getting shit done with infrastructure. You can't just keep pointing. Like, you're going to call me deranged about, like, Twitter people. Well, you're being deranged right here, like, focusing on, like, just what mean names Republicans use on people. Look at what's going on in Congress. Look at what's been voted on. Look at the legislation that's been passed. Like, yeah, people say mean things about Biden, but it's going to land a lot differently based on what he actually does.
like my rhetoric this is this is where with respect i think this is liberal brain rot oh my god i don't god. think acknowledging that you should arm yourself in preparation for a genocide and that the people who want to kill minorities are evil is an optical harm i think you're falling for civility oh, politics. But i'm saying that i'm not okay it's civility in politics own, okay. fam you have to understand that a lot of people who aren't uh I don't like using this because I know Destiny has like a thing against online lefties and it sounds like you have a obsession <laughs> with it. Um, and I'm not super, super obsessed with it. Do you, do you with, think uh -oh. it's a crazy online lefties, lefty thing to arm wait, 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 yourself me, in hold preparation? Up, hold up. Just let me finish the thought. Okay. I, my point is most people, even who consider themselves liberal, who are a part of our broader movement, definitely don't think of the Republican Party currently as being preparing to slaughter minorities in that's the what street. I want to and so when you say that people go uh, well then ex you have to explain it in a way that comes off as sort of logical the way that you explain it is as if you're just as even though because i've watched you i know you're not so i take it more seriously but for someone else who hasn't doesn't have that underlying understanding of kind of your thought process then it definitely comes off as just as unhinged kind of attached i talk i talk to my audience the right but i've about. explained my rationale dozens and dozens of times about the necessity of forming strong neighborhood-based political blocks, whether you're leftist or liberal. This isn't about socialism here. This isn't just about building communities that aren't going to roll over when authoritarians try to tear apart our democracy. I don't, like, I, I, the, the thing is to me, like, you are the one more out of touch with America than I am here because you're the one who flinched when I said you should buy a gun. You know, I'm in touch with Americana here. Now, I, I saw- Bro, Vosh. 95% of your audience has never touched a firearm in your life. 50% of them that would, would kill themselves if they had the opportunity to with a firearm, okay? What, like, what are you talking about? You're out of touch. I'm actually the one suggesting joining the revolutionary leftist guard to do mutual aid and defend communities against fascist police. You're the one that's out of touch. Bro, get the fuck over yourself. Come the fuck on, dude. Come on. Holy shit. Like, you're, you're, you're actually fucking unhinged, okay? Like, most of your audience probably couldn't even pass a psyche veil to get a firearm if we had those in the United States. <laughs> uh, I'm Guns in touch with Americana everywhere. here. Guns are. <laughs> Why shouldn't we own them? Dozens of them. Thousands of rounds I don't of ammunition. Need a gun. Armored. Um, I didn't punch. Armored vests. I am very un, un, uh, shocked by what you're saying so don't so don't worry i my think feelings aren't hurt. i explain my rationale well enough the precursors to genocide what leads to it that's a broadly recognized thing not just some crazy lefty theory. broadly recognized thing what do you mean bro you really think that we're hit broadly it's been recognized that the united states is quickly on track to do a genocide dude you're actually unhinged based thing the issue with liberals right now is they don't understand the stakes you know liberals the funniest thing is what's going to happen i'm stealing this partially from the guy that just donated me in youtube chat what's going to happen when vosh has been saying republicans want to genocide minorities republicans want to genocide minorities republicans want to genocide minorities and then the next election cycle rolls around and it's like republicans with historic gains in minority communities end up winning the house and senate republicans with continuing trends of historic games gains among minority communities especially hispanics sweep the house like how do you how do you square away what vosh is saying now with voting but maybe they're all just stupid like black people were too stupid to vote for bernie is what they would say maybe yeah low information voters to be treating republicans as what they actually are evil and immediately threatening now you can talk with them all you want i love talking to folks you saw that convo i had with the uh, lds person last night friendly convo um I don't want to, you know, it's not an intrinsic thing. Bring Republicans over, save them from themselves. But this, the threat right here, it's what we faced in Germany. By we, of course, I mean the progressive left and everyone else, by the way. It's that the belief that this type of political movement can be squashed by anything other than militant, aggressive political action Jesus. has failed in the past. So that's what we need to do. We got to bring liberals on board. They got to own the guns. They have to be practicing at the ranges. They have to be treating political organizing with the same sense of fatalistic engagement that Republicans do. You know, we need people out there as crazy as the Republicans in those school board meetings. We need them showing up to all those Repo local yeah. town hall groups. We need them that. to be psychotic uh, uh you know break the law i don't give a shit don't hurt any innocent people of course but be wacky well, who is innocent know? first i mean if they're all genocidal people like are are they innocent like
some bricks, don't care. They need to put the fear of God in Republicans. No, we're talking about the, the greatest country on earth, the God-given U.S. of A., and preventing you, the takeover of fascism. This this is the line? And we have, what's the, what, what do you mean? The, the union organizers in the turn of the 20th century were out there like warring with the police and getting neighborhoods bombed. But that right there, like precursor to genocide, throw a brick that you flinch at, like this is the issue here. I'm not saying I'm going out there and, you know, doing somersaults on cop cars myself. Obviously, I know, you know, I'm an indoors boy, but we just need that level of energy because there are liberals. But exactly. You just get out there. Right there. Everyone is indoor people there is no one except for republicans like, aren't very very as far as people who are willing to go out and enact violence this is not a mass movement whatsoever a bunch of people want to sit and scream about the damn de degenerates in elementary schools and a and bunch then of people the people on the left want to scream about how fascistic the republican party is and without the people doing in anything. power will do and it I think if you spend all of the energy that you want your audience to spend getting <laughs> trained at the gun range and you know going to self-defense classes and everything actually organizing which obviously even in the title the scream you're or the stream you're helping to do with canvassing and all that but if that was the focus we have public opinion on our side we but could I do both wash this movement but no you you can't do both you there's can. no broad appeal to a block of the left they running do both. around saying hey you know how you're really scared of the right because they seem to be uh, a little bit into violence and have a bunch of guns and everything, we're going to do the same thing. Good. Get Hooray. them on board with it. Like the way moderate Republicans are with, with their it. radicals. Wait, no, you're telling me it's impossible when Republicans do this. Republican fascists are advocates for violence and they're incredibly aggressive electorally but because they know their leaders the won't act it out of everything. That's what it's so upsetting. It's like Tucker Carlson is so obviously saying that white people are being replaced by black and brown people but then the way that he says it is never in that exact wording because he understands for a broad audience to like it he has to at least code it a little bit and then the more radical friend goes ah we know what he's saying they don't and so it. 30 percent of republicans believe that violence might be necessary to fix the direction the country is on i'm sure there are far fewer liberals as a percentage who would believe that if i am to be one of the left-leaning people who will openly advocate for that then let me be that person if the Republicans Jesus. can survive 30% of their group thinking it might be necessary, I'm sure that the left can survive me believing it might be necessary. I just don't think it's an optical harm, you know? The only people who complain to me about this, by the way, are, are like hand-wringing liberals for the most part, you know? Or that, that LDS guy from the other night, um, he said he didn't like Trump that much. It's usually people doing the, um, cons not concern trolling, because that implies you're being disingenuous, you're not. Uh, the, you know, like concern from the side. I know what you're saying because I get upset with the same people and, and I'm picturing like uh, Nancy Pelosi talking about, you know, wanting a strong Republican Party and all that nonsense. I, I, what a great, I know quick, the person great, that you're picturing me to great be. Great statement by Pelosi. I need you to understand the there's is. something in between. Uh, oh, that's so scary rhetoric and we need to lock hands with the right. And what you're talking about, which is, all right, it's war, baby. Let's go. Um, uh, you have to defend yourself against violence. Do you think that's uh do you think like um, a black right guy now, from the 1960s would like shirk if I said that? Like, you should own a firearm because there's a decent probability that far right violence will be inflicted against you. Yes, do you think that'd be like an point. out of nowhere thing for but them to hear? This is that's a beautiful po point. What about or, or by bringing that up? How did we actually win on the civil rights question? Me. And like you said, there's a little bit of walking and chewing gum, but what was successful in pushing for that uh, political change? If you think I'm against the passage of law to support our case, then I'm, I'm, I am in support of that. But that was something, first of all, obviously a lot of outcomes didn't change after that. And there was quite a bit of militant violence at the time. But, and you know, it's also worth pointing out that one of the only reasons the Civil Rights Act was passed was because there was so much agitation within the country that was exacerbated by people who are very like me. But yeah, I am glad the law was passed. Though that was because they were able to pass the law. What can Democrats pass? And there is, a, well, they could pass a lot of stuff if they uh, beat uh, Mansion and Cinema into submission. Well, they would still need to get rid of the filibuster, which a lot of them seem unwilling to do. Right.
which that, if they so lose, I'm with you on that. We're, well, not, we're yeah. about to get to the primaries, which we're probably going to lose at the very least the Senate tie, possibly the House. And after that, the presidency is probably a coin flip. Because the loudest, the movements that are, uh, obviously they have their crazy base. Okay, boom, they have them. What happens and when the have, Reds win? And they, and they keep them. What was the question? What happens when the Reds win? When the Republicans win, what it's do we all do over, then? dude. We lose. You're going to just... Genocide. Not, tell me you're not going to respect rules of law passed by them if they entail the oppression of minorities. Like, you'd go like, well, they won the election, so they just get to do that. <laughs> of course not. If it was, you know, unconstitutional stuff, which... No, no, no. About, definitely would Wait, be. they have the Supreme Court. It's constitutional. What are you going to do? My point is, okay, yes. If it, if it was a law that i understood is wrong i would be against it morally wrong right yeah well what would you do it's, it's the, okay it depends on the specifics of the situation well, if you're let's, talking okay about, let's, wait, sorry hold on fuck. Fuck. Yeah. constitutional what are you gonna I, do I, you'd go like well they won the election so they just get to do that <laughs> of course not if it was you know, unconstitutional stuff, which no, no, no. About, definitely would Wait, be. they have the Supreme Court. It's constitutional. What that's, are you gonna do? I, <laughs> that's not that's not exactly how the Supreme Court works, Vaj. But I, my, I guess almost. Maybe Pisco would say it is. <laughs> Trigger, he's gonna get mad. I said that. Do. My point is, okay, yes. If it if it was a law that I understood is wrong, I would be against it. Morally wrong, right? Yeah. That's well, what that's what wrong means, Vosh. You don't have to say morally wrong. When somebody says wrong, it means morally. That's what wrong means. What would you do? It's, it's the, okay. It depends on the specifics of the situation. Well, if you're let's, okay, about, like, let's say let's say, like, let's say they pass a very anti-democratic bill, like they've been doing in states. Hmm? There, there's not much. I'm not going to go out and start shooting Republican politicians because they did that. Whoa, whoa! I didn't say that. I would. It would be uh, legally hey, unwise said, for me would, to say that. Say of course, that. no. I would never advocate people do that. Um, but let's say they in 2024 have the House, the Senate, the ju the the court, and uh, the presidency. Okay, and let's say after they have that, they do start federally passing undemocratic laws, which they can do uncontested and, in fact, absolutely will do. Okay. And you see, law by law, democracy being eroded. So, what do you do? You know? Now, I'm not... you. It's it's a little Again, rhetorical. Again, we have... A, well, I'll answer it. We have... A especially process? in that situation... Because here's... Again, you go to me. We tried liberals, um, and it, it didn't work. Republicans are about to win. But... You, you understand as much as I do. How is this not just an ultimate, like, I didn't get my way democratically, so now I'm going to start killing people? Isn't that really what Vosh is talking about at the end of the day? What if they start passing laws that we really don't like? What if they start doing things that we hate? Don't we need to kill them? Like, isn't that really what we're talking about at the end of the day? That's kind of what it feels like. True progressives are not in power right now. And if that's what we are fighting for, I think progressivism has a very popular appeal. And if we dominated... Also, wait, hold on. Didn't Republicans pass fuck all for legislation under Trump? Like what? I mean, we had they got their um, they got their uh, like their big tax cut thing. But other than that, it's not like they did a whole bunch of shit with immigration. It's not like they fucked over. They couldn't even fucking replace the ACA. Like what? They didn't even get shit done under Trump. Like first step, they didn't even fucking fund. I think in their in their future budget. So nothing even happened with the first step program. That was my understanding, unless that's wrong. But and undid you know any bad things that they were doing the biggest thing they did was Texas. oh judicial nominations they did um but um i mean that's the, yeah you get that by virtue of being executive or like executive actions by trauma yeah. no i know what you're saying if you're but unraveling democracy, 2024 the, power. What, the outcome i'm describing where they control like every element of government isn't an unlikely one i think it's actually more likely than any other possibility and they've been pretty openly anti-democratic for a while so once that happens, if they start passing federal legislation to make it more difficult for Democrats to win in the future, whether we're talking like big redistricting or they full on ban like uh, mail in voting and then like restrict laws about intimidation at the voter. Place, I don't think you can. I don't think you can federally ban mail in voting. Whereas Pisco can answer. Wouldn't that be an unbelievable overreach of the federal government? Like, I'm pretty sure states get to decide how they want to run their elections. 
I don't think the federal government could go in and start telling states, this is how you, I, like, that would be unbelievable. That would be an insane overreach of federal power. Because they know their white boys are going to show up and keep black people from voting in Atlanta. Whatever crap like that, you know. What do you do? Because you're not going to win in 2026, right? Like, they're, they're so preventing you two from things winning on in that. 2026. The first thing, the first thing is... Definitely just, I, I don't know what you would, how you would answer that. So I guess you can answer afterwards because definitely any form of violence isn't going to make it better. It's just going to have more justification for them to uh, crack down even harder. The second thing is we've seen already there's tons of anti-democratic type laws in place and you, it can be overcome. And we saw with, and then the, the last point I'll make, and I would love to hear you answer what you would prescribe, uh, we definitely aren't to a place yet where even the Republican Party, as crazy as they are, feels like they can do on a federal level a certain level of wacko crazy stuff or else they're going to lose public opinion completely. Trump was in power and still legislatively, what crazy stuff did they do? Just a really dumb tax cut bill. I mean, uh, he, he never yeah. lost public opinion and nothing he did ever lost him any public opinion. Ever, like every crazy thing he didn't said. That's not true. I think Trump did start to lose after January 6th with independence. Now, the Republican Party is a whole other fucking ballpark right now. But I'm pretty sure that I thought I read that post January 6th was one of the biggest departures of Republicans from the Republican Party. I think in like history. It was a huge thing. Um, but. Um, but I don't think. Um, I, I, I think that Trump started to become more unpopular outside of the Republican Party, which is kind of important. Lost him any public opinion. Ever, like every crazy thing he didn't said, his his support right, was unwavering. Okay. Republicans N don't None care. None of that was Re foundational, you except could, for at the very end. You could be executed on live TV by Trump himself, and they would all vote for him the next day. This is what I mean. They, no, you're just wrong. No, you know how? I, no, how I'm not. No, I'm ab no, I'm yes, you're absolutely. Wrong. His fan base, the Republican fan base would, but not with like the center leading people, and then like. The Republicans on the side. Do not. His approval so, rating. So dumb. His approval rating did not move. You're wrong. Well, hold on. I thought Trump's approval rating was pretty bad near the end. Wasn't it in the 30s? I might, I might be wrong on that. Trump approval 538. <sighs> yeah, his approval rating nosedive. The end was 38 percent. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know what Vosh is talking about. No, right now. Do you remember what, how do you low know? it was when he left office? And it know? wasn't that low. Amidst Republicans? January 6th. Amidst yeah. Republicans? And amidst where is it right now? I mean, it was still really high. I have no clue, but really high. Yeah, it's yeah. very high. Plus percent. Okay, also, hold on. This is another dumb thing. This happened with Bernie Sanders a lot. Approval ratings of a politician outside of office don't mean fucking anything, okay? Don't ever let somebody pull that trick on you where, like, look at the approval rating of this guy. Bro, he's not in office. He's not doing anything. Like, he's being judged, like, very, very leniently right now. Like, that, don't ever let people try to pull you over that, like, that's some huge indicator of how likely it is. Not to say that Trump's not popular, because I think he is. Um, and not to say that, like, he has no chance of winning. I think he would have a really good chance of winning. But just don't, don't let people, like, cite, like, um, how popular somebody is using polls when they're not even in office. Like it's a totally different ballgame. They don't care. Republicans do not care. And if you really <laughs> think they wouldn't, okay, do you, wait, do you, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Do you wait, really wait, wait, think, because yeah. because you keep saying stuff to me, which c indicates that, that you this don't know is what you're more of like about. an emotionality thing, not some it's principled good. understanding of the political That's system. Because you said the, um, the Republicans aren't at a point where they could pass some crazy stuff that could influence the democracy. The Republicans- and still win a federal election? Correct. Th they'd already won the federal election. The Republicans can do whatever they want if they hold all three branches. No, it wouldn't not, matter what the voters mm -hmm. cared after. Republicans have fought in party before. Um, Republicans have had infighting. They did it with the Freedom Caucus. Republicans have fought before. You have to be like, you can't just say that they're lockstep with everything. They kind of were with Trump, but like it only takes a few, depending on the margins, like to not have those um, things be passed. You know, but. Okay, so. Yeah, you're saying that the hypothetical you posed to me is because the way you laid it out was like they did more stuff like they've done in states, which we could overcome that in the next election if they did, if they mirrored what they've been trying to do on, on a statewide. In but if you're just saying they got rid of democracy federally, 
of course, obviously, now it's time for a revolution. Okay. But so wait, making so it how do you, for people to so, vote. Yeah, so wait, okay, how do you, so at that point, mm -hmm. like, when? When what? They, there's not just going to be an anti-democracy law, you know? <laughs> um, that's my point, though. In... Let's say that Trump got back in uh, got back in office, so he has two years, and he and he kept the House and the Senate. Which, if they got in power in 2022, by 2024, if they could keep that power, that's a whole other question. But let's say they did. Okay, all three branches held by Republicans. No, I miss what you're saying. Is they're already in power, they can do whatever they want, and I'm saying they know that if they do, if they go too far, they will lose public opinion. That's why uh, Trump lost because he. Sucked it up a bunch, with Republicans, in a bunch of different ways. No, they don't care about mainstream Republican opinion. They care about the opinion of their constituency. But the, just the Republicans base Republicans support it. The base supports everything they do. Yes, agreed, a hundred percent. The base isn't enough to win, though. You have American to appeal to independence to some extent. On whether or not you believe the Republicans will continue to vote af for Republicans after they attempt to undermine our democracy, they already did. Republicans are uh, yeah. going to come out just as strong in 2024 Undying, despite the coup. No, no, you said they're in power, and so they can all, they can just, boom, do whatever they want. You're never going to get in power again. I'm saying for them to keep the layer on top of their base that allows them to... Bro, I don't know how old this kid is. Vosh just doesn't understand anything about how politics works, which is kind of sad because he's a political commentator. But I think Vosh just thinks that, like, once you've won an election, you can just get in and do everything you want because that's, how, that's not how this works, though, right? Like, you're still going to have considerations for your base and everything going on. You don't want to just lose every future election. Um, you can't just get in and do whatever the fuck you want. If you did, Trump would have done... Like, here's, here's, like, the kill shot question of Vosh. Um, where is the wall? Where is our ban on Muslim immigration? Like, wh why wasn't Trump able to get anything done outside of executive action? Like, why did he fail legislatively at, at almost every step? Why wasn't he able to get anything done? Like, that's the question, right? Like, you, you, can't, you can't just get in and do whatever the fuck you want. It just doesn't work that way. In federal elections, because their base is not enough of the country for them to win another federal election but if they did stuff that would turn off this uh block of people it won't matter matter because they'll rig it all they'll have already won right okay so then you're saying that means in two years before the next midterm you're saying they would pass stuff that would actually pretty much kill democracy what midterm do you I'm saying if you if they, the, 2024 2026 what midterm you, I don't think you understand, and this is why I use the rhetoric that I do. We're up. Time's up. They attempted a coup in the last election, and they still believe it was right to do so. We're already in the point in the history books where it's getting near too late to do anything. You're talking about, well... If they revoked our democracy in 2024, by 2026, the Republicans that have supported everything they've ever done up to this point would suddenly lose faith. No, Tucker Carlson will talk every single day and night about how anti- Why was the government shut down for something? Yeah. Anti-democratic it is that it's not possible for Klan members to- The dude that is debating Vosh donating to ask for a review on his debate skill too. Um, oh, is he watching? You did like it. I think you're doing a decent job here. Vosh is like, absolutely immovable in this position. He is being nice to you, so I don't know if you presented yourself as a... I guess he said in the beginning you were a fan of his, so, but we'll see how it goes. ...protest outside of voting booths in black neighborhoods. They will talk endlessly about how the new wave of preliminary voting is an attack on our democracy and so on and so forth. They'll talk about how new redistricting laws are necessary to preserve the foundation. We won't get another chance here. And the problem that I have, you say, if they get rid of our democracy... You're right, man. You look kind of drained. Well, your mom just drained me off camera, so... Oh, then we have a revolution. You won't know the democracy is gone until eight years after it was too late. Because we're already right there. The clock's ticking to midnight. And you're talking about how the moderate Republicans wouldn't vote for them after they ended democracy? This is what I'm concerned about. You need to be more like me. You Okay, stop. Stop it. That was very inspirational. I'm obviously not depending on a certain... Oh, I really hope that Republicans all of a sudden wake up. No, it's stupid. I'm saying that as we saw in uh, 2020, 2020, when the Republicans stray away from broad appeal too much, 
they lose. They Bosch doesn't you know, understand how our electoral systems or, or politics in general works. I think that's why you, you're never going to win on this point. Because this guy's just going to assume that, like, no, like, or when I say this guy, I'm sorry. Vosh thinks that Republicans can do anything they want and they're not going to lose popularity. That is true among the core Trump supporters, but that's not true among the non core Trump supporters and independents, which you need to I win. Could the turn out all that good stuff. What we haven't done is effectively legislate or effectively be in power. And I do get your point a little bit of like walking and chewing gum at the same time, but the only way that we can pressure the politicians slash get new politicians who will effectively govern so that majority of the country goes, well, obviously we want them in power. What did Trump win on in 2016? Um, he, okay, obviously there was a tons of bigotry they spoke to, uh, all that type of stuff, but then there was a big portion of people who supported him because they thought he was anti-establishment, going to bring back our outsourced jobs, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Why? I mean, it was pretty much, that was definitely a part of it. He didn't do anything to that effect. He didn't really do anything. And then after the presidency ended, the Republicans still support him. He ran mostly on the wall. He that lost, was like though, That was a big part of the Muslim ban. He got more votes in 2020 than he did in 2016. And Biden got more than that. Yes. So what happens when the Democrats don't get more than the Republicans? Because the <laughs> what? Then they'll probably lose, Vosh. <clears throat> Republicans have only ever increased their support. You keep saying if they do something crazy, moderate Republicans will lose support. No, they didn't. Trump had four years to act like a lunatic, and then more Republicans voted for him. Democrats well, this is my only point. have to they, lose they, once. He, this is why Democrats, like a... Democrats don't stop fascism. They abate it temporarily. They're like a wall that you build. Because no, they're we not need a radical, people. progressive You're not getting it. Revolution, You're not, not getting it. You're no, getting bullets. It. You're not getting a progressive revolution, okay? Bernie lost. We're if not getting think... progressives in the House okay, and in the Senate in 2022. Honestly think that it's more likely that we can get a, a mass revolution. movement of people yeah. that overrun <clears throat> the political body and get in power and squash the Republican, the current Republican uh, movement for good. If you think that's less likely than getting a mass movement of people ready to clash in the streets with far right wingers. I'm only saying we have to be ready off, for when it rocker. does happen. Oh my God. And if you and by the way again, you think this okay, is a mutually, everyone, you yeah, keep sure. saying this is a mutually exclusive thing. It's it not. Is. No, it's not. Because, no, stop. No matter how much yeah. you may believe it, the delusion that you can be you can either be electorally effective or like militant, but you can't be both is just wrong. Republicans have proven it wrong. Democrats in the past have proven it wrong. It's not true. You can vote, you can advocate, you can be electorally effective. Go appeal to the moderate centrist base. But I'll tell you what people vote on. They vote on fear. More than anything else, people vote when they're afraid. That's why Biden got so many votes, because they were afraid of Trump. And we need to start putting the fear of fascism in people in this country. Jesus you want Christ. On electoral effectiveness, there you go. That's how Republicans get their vote. Tarker Carlson talks every night about how the country is going to die at the Tarker? hands of immigration. Oh, you want ball. people brought over and voting blue? They need to understand that it's milk toast liberal Democrats or a boot on their neck. I am both militant and uh, electorally effective in this respect. And if more liberals were, we wouldn't have to worry about the Republicans because they'd be treated like the radical brigand. I feel like every time he goes on one of these little tangents, he just wants to do like a big fucking, he, he's looking for like the soys in his chat. They're like, great rant, Vosh. True king based. Great based rant, Vosh. That was so based, Vosh. Great rant. Nice job, dude. That's what, if, every time he like goes on one of these, that's what it feels like, ugh. group that they are but instead no, liberals go oh no if we defeat them their ideas are bad and surely if we understand that people you know they'll be moved over Cyril, you mean surely no, they won't nothing exactly, you and i say will move republicans earlier over. civil rights movement don't you think that as a person existing in the 1960s uh or 1950s that would 100 percent be a time where like wow we could be headed towards something really bad a really large portion of this country wants us to be suffering it was like the era of militant leftism so i don't know why and, you're you're bringing that up as though it's a counter to my argument and what squashed that movement not for good but what squashed it 
And what got lasting change was a movement that had broad appeal. And I guess what you could be saying, and I could agree, I guess we could come to some agreement. For me, the way that I think about all of this is, you know, like a broad progressive movement. And maybe what you're saying is the role that you play in that movement is agitation, making a certain portion of people who identify as progressive understand the potential violence in the future. I think a lot of people understand. I think that if I, I think if I could have a conversation with an average American, like an independent, you know, like uh, maybe, think, but, yeah. What are Sorry, the Republicans no doing? Everything they do, it's a lead up. You know, it's very clear what they're doing. You can have a convo with them, put the fear of God in them. I can't make them like Democrats, but I sure as hell can make them hate Republicans. And the Republicans deserve their. I hate. would love they to see oh, Bosch is- talks to average Americans. I would pay so much money. I'd pay for a pay per view exclusive to see that series. Oh my God. This is what's going to happen, okay? Every single person who isn't exactly where you are is going to. Look, because I've I met so many people recently who are watching the current uh, Republican Party and they're like, ah, oh, that's terrible. I don't even, that's just, what the heck? And if they turn and the king of our movement is Vosh and he's like, you know, they're demons. And dude, some of your rhetoric was 100% what I see right wingers do when uh, like dog whistling True. for violence. True. Like uh, Tucker Carlson's thing where he says, they're effective. Why wouldn't a dad go in and hit an LGBTQ teacher or whatever? Well, the critical difference uh, there is that and, he's encouraging violence against LGBTQ teachers, and I'm talking about fascists who are trying to kill Right, LGBTQ and if I had to pick people. one... Yeah, the difference is that I, my violence is righteous. My anger is justified. I want to kill the bad guys. That's the difference between me and Tucker Carlson. He wants to kill good guys, and I want to kill bad guys. Don't you understand? Like, that's... Ugh. I would pick yours, because yours is somewhat defensive in nature somewhat but when Defe- wait is, is defensive somewhat? In nature. yes somewhat no, wait before you go off on a big thing i'm saying that the way that you portrayed it of course Bosch had another rant <laughs> geared up and ready to go somewhat do you not understand that lgbt people are under attack area so when you lay it out like you just did okay we're just waiting for something crazy to happen and then we'll be ready uh the way that you laid it out in your initial video was like not explicitly saying go harm people but as close to that as i hear other people doing and so while the underlying logic is definitely defensive i think encouraging people to violence in general is something that we don't want broadcasted in our movement because a lot of people are going to see that and go okay that's also too radical (sighs) and that's when people get complacent but when you offer an amazing alternative movement um that a lot of people can get on board with and it isn't fascistic People will join that. And that's what, as sad as I am to say this, because obviously I don't think he was the ideal candidate, that's why Biden won, is people were like, whoa, Trump's crazy. And they turned, and Biden, even though a lot of it was just, huh, 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 offered a pretty good alternative vision. Nope. You're completely wrong. People voted for him because he was the most electable candidate. He won. <laughs> he was, why, why would you ever? What a fucking worthless statement. Why did people vote for him? People voted for him because he was the best candidate to vote for. Yeah, thanks, Vosh. Am- amazing political insight there, Chief. Thank you so much for that for that one. Okay. People also saying were afraid crazy wacko stuff. They would Trump. not have gone in and vote. You, he won because people were afraid of Trump. People weren't voting for him because they were excited about what he had to say. It's because they were terrified of another Trump presidency. And the problem with what you're talking about right now is a self-perpetuating issue. You know, liberals are terrified of the realization that they share this country with monsters who would have them killed. Well, that's tough, but we have to grow up. It has to, we have to learn that and fear motivates. And it's legitimate fear. This isn't like uh, Tucker Carlson fear mongering where he makes shit up so that his billionaire masters can get away with another tax cut. This, this is, is where Vosh makes shit up so that his oilers and whalers can donate large sums of money to a stream. <laughs> Way different, guys. Now, Tucker Carlson might be, you know, motivated by money and selfish reasons, but not Vosh. Oh, wait, hold on. Thank you for the $150 donation, comrade. I'll see you on the front lines, buddy, for my fucking Beverly Hills house. Hell yeah. It's like climate change type fear, real stuff, really happening. People should be afraid. They should act in that fear. We've been trying to get people afraid of climate change for years and years and years. And you know what? We've done a terrible job of it. 
in large part because a bunch of people in this country think that it's God's given rapture and they think opposing it is, uh, you know, sacrilegious. Um, but also because liberals just aren't cut out for the fear game. They're weak and spineless and made of jelly. But it can be improved. Mm. It's possible to improve. You know, the French resistance in World War II wasn't just liberals. Or sorry, it wasn't just leftists. It was liberals. It was centrists, moderates even. They were united in a hatred of fascism. And they fought and they died um, to, well, irritate the Nazi occupants. Um, we need that energy. Uh, we, we, if, if, if we're going to concede this, like, well, people aren't engaging with this, you know, they're going to kill us rhetoric, then we're already dead. Um, we need to, um, Cause that's not something that then make it then make it appealing to them, make them see but there has to be some factual basis to there, it. And there is, there and that's is your not factual problem. basis yes. to a mass killing of Americans. Do you, uh, do you know how you genocides know, happen by the, by the Republican party? There is. Do you know how genocides take place? We're already at dehumanizing language of degenerates who are being convinced and groomed into their degeneracy by an elite cabal of dehumanizing language. You mean like calling like Republicans demons? Do you think that might be a little dehumanizing, or does it not count when you do it because they're evil? Hmm. And how it's many the Nazis. Times, how many times have we seen that uh, language that didn't lead to a geno genocide? I'm sorry. Do you know how is that long people have been getting called? Degenerate. Yep. True. How, do you know how many precursors there are to the current wave of anti-LGBT media attention and legislation? Because we have the 1980s, which was when Reagan let hundreds of thousands of gay people die by preventing the CDC from doing any research into AIDS. So that was a genocide. The last yeah, time so this that happened, was a you. That's oh, okay. That's our bar for genocide. Thank you, Vouch. Thank you. It was a genocide. Even in that moment, we would have been farther from pro or further from progress if the backlash to that was. I actually don't. I'm still unclear on. Okay, actually, this is a great question. That happens. What is the Vosh response to that? Because you kind of got like, oh no, that's not what I said. Whenever I uh, I didn't make, mean to make your voice sound annoying there. Uh, <laughs> whenever I said, okay, so go kill politicians, and it's like, no, of course not. It's defense. Well. Then what, in that example, if that's a genocide, what is the response that is more um, revolutionary? What are you trying to do, get my channel banned? When people <laughs> are being in killed- you, I, 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 Dude, fuck. If I was less lazy, I would like spam report every single one of these fucking videos. This is actually like fucking unreal, dude. Well, are you saying the type of stuff you're advocating for would get your channel banned? Like what do you, like what a fucking loser. In a dog whistle When way. people, that's not a dog whistle. When people are being killed by the hundreds of thousands, do you seriously think it's unethical to use violence to defend yourself? Do you really think that's unethical? Would it have been unethical I don't think for the it, Jews to fight I actually don't think that? it's unethical. I think it's, uh, okay, you bring up that example. That's a, Of course, in that situation, we can see how violence not only is the only option, but then also could lead us to where we want to go. I'm asking you in the example of uh, AIDS in the 80s, is that going to take us forward in the most effective way? Your, if you commit um, hard enough? Ethical, even if it's ethical. <laughs> True. If, you if violence isn't working, you're just not using enough violence. Thank you, Vouch. Of course it's ethical. And if you commit hard enough, anything is possible. I'll ask you, do you... so? You know, do you think, would you have been chiding the Jews for fighting back and say 31, <laughs> even if you knew through some prophetic ability that their attempts at fighting back would have been ineffective? Because it seems no, like you're only telling me that self-defense is justifiable if you can know the future and know that it will work for sure. It's possible that there's nothing we can do. This might be a pointless conversation it's possible that the 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 dominoes have already begun to fall we're not going to stop republicans from winning and no amount of violent counteraction is going to prevent them from overriding our democracy it might be too late so at this point i've seen decades of liberal messaging and centrist oh bring them over shit fail uh i think we're i just think we're past that point uh i think we're at the point now where we have to recognize there's never been an actual progressive movement that like a Bernie-style progressive movement that uh, rose up thus far. We're, it's too late. We're, 
in 2024, that's the next election. We don't have time for progressives to win, to take over the Democratic Party and win the House and the Senate and We're the We're out of time for democracy. It's time for authoritarianism, boys. Like, come on, dude. How can you not hear how crazy you sound? Let's see. Alarmist. Of course, we should be raising all of the red flags, but that is, there's no way in which people being ready for violence, the only thing that's going to do in, I mean, I'm okay with people getting a gun in case something ever happens, of course. Um, oh, there you go. Second Amendment. Gosh, you're killing me. You think I'm someone that I'm not. Um, but there's not an outcome that I can see that has been explained in a logical way where we express our ambition to conduct violence if needed and that helps us win the election or something or it helps us after after the election you know what why why is this being framed in, in electoral terms for you this is about life and death you, you just asked 2024 2024 is done <laughs> we've already 2024 is a coin flip maybe something happens between now and then but whatever outcomes are going to take place from direct action aren't going to have a significant impact in 2024 <sighs> I'm talking about what happens no In another world, this kid says, let's say infinite people are running at you for electoral change that you disagree with, Vosh. Are you saying that you should defend yourself with lethal force instead of submitting to the mob? <laughs> that's that's the kill shot that we need, baby. At or who wins that election. Maybe a Dem wins 2024. Maybe we have to wait till 2028 for this to be relevant. I don't know. We're Why is Rashi even to planning to canvas? If this, I don't know if he's going to canvas. It feels like some shit that he just keeps saying to get the reward for. I don't know if he actually will or not, but who knows? Hey, if he does, we'll see. Lose pretty hard in 2022, though, so that's going to be... We're not going to get anything done, even if we win in 2024. But eventually, hmm. they're going to get a hold in us. They've been redistricting like hell. Every single time they undo something, Democrats don't have the power to redo. Uh, you know, we need to be ready. And I have to ask you, just out of curiosity. Ask him. When in Germany would you have said violence was okay? Jesus Christ. I'm definitely not familiar enough with the timeline, so I can't give specifics. Um, but obviously I do think violence was justified uh, at certain points. Like, at a certain point it definitely would have been. But, for example, if I were to make a comparison because we didn't know the future, if when just racist things were being said about Jewish uh, Germans, mm -hmm. if Jews started going out and just, again, I'm not clear on even what you're- What about arming up? Is. Wait, hold on. I'm just saying point. getting ready. Up. So all I'm only saying that's getting not ready. not at all what you, okay. No, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying, getting ready. Oh, I'm totally okay for everybody to get a firearm as long as they are very safe with it. Well, sure, they shouldn't be unsafe, but that's not but an exaggeration. The, getting ready me. for to defend yourself. That's what I've been saying. So they can do that. What about um, when the German government started passing laws of restriction on Jewish people and businesses? Like specifically designating Jewish people as a separate legal category alongside dehumanizing rhetoric in order to... Um, in order to categorize them separately and and uh, you know limit their movement, you know, oppress them in a variety of ways. That plus dehumanizing language plus hate crimes start to rise against them. You know, in that environment, because that's where we are right now with trans people. That exact we're exactly right there with trans people. It is the exact same thing as the pogroms. It is the exact same thing as wearing the star, the wristband or the fucking arm shit with the star david we're exactly there it's the same fucking thing i don't know where they were the star david on, but point is where we are in that environment do you think but it's unfair the, to yeah. go like yeah you should be like ready if they come for you like they are getting ready for something and you need to be ready you need to arm yourself um again i already said i think it's fair to just say everyone you know be ready for anything but in the case of trans people for anything seeing a very uh but that's not the focus of your commentary. Your commentary isn't like, uh, just be ready in case anything happens, but be super safe. It was like, let's go. It's, they want us all dead. 
That was one of your quotes. Do you think it would um, be inappropriate for the Jews to have said that back in the <laughs> early 30s? They, they want us dead, the Nazis want us all dead. Could it they, not have been? I don't know the history, but it probably would have been, is my guess. What are you saying? If the Nazis were to even, like, are you trying to, are you trying to justify, like, some fucking time travel, like, preemptive violence? Like, 10 years, when did the Nazi party start gaining power and become anti-Semitic? Like, how early is Wash, like, are you trying to say, like, if somebody saw Hitler in the 20s, they should have been able to, like, murder the dude if they saw him because he might have become, like, well, I, don't, I don't understand what we're trying to justify here like are, are like is it the second any political party says something that we think might be bad or could theoretically down the road lead to something bad that we're allowed to start killing people I, like i don't understand we're right i don't know i don't know the specifics of the build-up to uh world war ii enough to compare it to our current situation well the night of broken glass happened in 38 anti-semitism like, existed in europe way before nazi germany yeah sure tech i'm my understanding <laughs> my shit is understanding is that like even in the world war one era that a lot of europe had anti-semitic problems it wasn't something unique to germany now not everybody had death camps but um so maybe maybe jews had the right to <laughs> hold on you know what this video might be? <laughs> it, maybe this video is Vosh's really, really, really roundabout way of justifying the existence and the aggression of Israel. Isn't, isn't, couldn't you arguably say that that's just like Jewish people's preemptive violence against their perceived genocidal threats across the world, across the Middle East and across the rest of the world? Is that, is this, is this whole video just a love letter to Israel? Isn't that the justification for the state of Israel? That like, we need to exist because everybody's fucking trying to kill us. Can't we preemptively like set this up and have our own place? Like that's essentially what he's saying, right? Like a year before the war, you know, but the, the mechanisms for the Holocaust were laid well before that point, you know, 33, 34, the, the, you know, you have a political party in power. You really telling me back in like 34 or whatever, when all the precursors I've described to you were in place, they were saying something like, yeah, the Nazis are evil. They want you dead. And you would go in and say, hey, come on. You really think you're going to convince Nazis with rhetoric like that? Like, you know, and that's a great, that's a great thing that it's nothing like or not nothing. It's a. Uh not equal to what we're seeing now because like in the case of trans people uh increasingly people are totally on board and i can tell you every single person that i've talked to who has like a an icky belief on how we should be treating trans people in society it's the thing that i hate the most about this comment i can actually i in my brain right now i don't know if i'm just because I'm unhinged. I can totally 100% see Vosh's audience's reaction to every single thing this guy's saying. They are probably sewing out like so unbelievably fucking hard right now. It's so fucking cringe. I can feel all of it. Oh God. From being misinformed on what is going on. Most of it is like, oh, I'm really scared because I think that little kids are going into class and teachers are saying- Oh wait, shit, it is. His chat is on screen. Sorry, I thought I was watching from his perspective. Oh, I was watching from the history guy's perspective. Vosh. What's happening in Alabama to teens being forbidden from taking puberty blockers isn't completely dissimilar to a genocide. <laughs> Bro, really? Do not bring trans people up. The genocide has literally already started. Not a boy, you're a girl. You're not a boy, you're a girl until they turn into a girl. Like, that's what... How the fuck would you know? Public opinion doesn't matter to Republicans. What do you mean? How do you think they win elections? You don't need to hate trans people to enable genocide. They then thought about explain, the Jews. Oh, no one's advocating for that. And people like this are the reason we're all gonna die at good one. Whoa, 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 just talk down the gunman trying to kill you. Bro, uh, we need to pick up. League of Legends. I just wanna play League. Oh, uh, dude, it's actually so disgusting to watch this. This is like insane shit. This video is actually unhinged. He's such a fucking pussy that he's hiding inside his little fucking fortress because he knows he's too stupid to confront anybody reasonable on his opinion on this shit. What a little fucking cowardly bitch. Unbelievable. What a dumb fuck. Right now we have public, we have the people on our side and then there's this fringe that's same in Germany. Germany, Germany, was, Germany was a very progressive place before, uh, during the Weimar Republic. Not as progressive as modern You're saying that Germany America. wasn't 
You're saying that Hitler and the Nazi Germany was smushed. Germany was a very progressive place before uh, during the Weimar Republic. Not as progressive. You're saying as that Germany wasn't. You're saying that Hitler and the Nazis were not a popular movement. No, the Germany uh, Nazis only had initially support of like 25 to 30 percent of the population. They seized power anti-democratically and through seizing control of education and the means of propaganda, they convinced a larger and larger group of Germans of the general political aims, misinforming them. Wait, hold on. Were the Germans all of in power or the Nazis what, for like fucking, was it like 10 years? I don't remember, I have to look this up. Did they have enough time to, to control all the education and brainwash and propaganda everybody through schools? Like, how, wait, how long would... Fuck, I need to read my German history. Because I feel like every time I listen to Vosch talk about... I feel like anytime I listen to a lefty talk about Nazi Germany, it's probably completely fucking... It's not even remotely true, but... Uh, okay, I don't know. Some of the stuff they'd like to say about Jews were that they were effet intellectuals who would corrupt their children through degenerate messaging designed to destroy Western civilization. It was not a popular movement to begin with. They seized power anti-democratically. You know how many people are Republicans in the US? About 30%. Everything is set up. And the Germans and the Nazis were not any more intrinsically anti-Jewish to begin with than modern Republicans are against trans people. Maybe you can convince one or two or three or four, but every night Tucker Carlson speaks to an audience of millions. I'm sorry, at a certain point- We just gotta, we just gotta kill him. <laughs> it's like, Look, maybe everything works out, but past a certain point, n not saying you need to be ready is just irresponsible. Okay, and I already agree. You can totally say you need to be ready. Your, uh, what I am kind of addressing is very different than just you need to be ready. But I do think, um, even in the case that you're talking about, I hate doing this because it's like the most extreme case and mm -hmm. definitely a uh, lack of knowledge there. But if early on when they started slandering Jewish people. If there's a bunch of Jewish people who started enacting violence or, or kind of promoting really violent rhetoric, even though I think it would be justified. Does Vosh sound like Tim Pool? No, I think Tim Pool is a little bit more like a just asking questions kind of person. Whereas Vosh is like telling you to go like get ready to murder people. <laughs> Tim Pool at least has a little bit more plausible deniability. Vosh is just like fully fucking bought in, dude. He doesn't give a fuck. Moral. I don't think even you would believe that would have helped them. That How many guns does Vosh have? Is he, you know, taking up arms so he's ready to fight alongside all of his LGBTQ brothers and sisters? Or are we just supposed to, are we expected to fight this war on our own with no help from our brave Vosh? He has at least one. Okay, thank God. Caused it all to seem more justified. And that's why I'm well, really scared about um, going around saying, Republicans are demons and human flesh. The Holocaust then happened anyone anyway. who's like a little soft-hearted liberal is going to be like, oh, that seems so crazy. Like, I definitely don't want to be a stupid fucking kid doesn't realize we're about to have an LGBTQ Holocaust. Part of that I movement. Mean, when the Holocaust happened anyway, you can't really go back in time and be like, well, if you'd been more violent, a second Holocaust would have, like the Holocaust too would have happened. Um, no, actually, I think that something I would have changed it have if things. Jews back then um, had simply armed themselves and then killed all of the Nazi party, you know? <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck do you even, what do you, is it, dude, you watch your glorious bastards too many times. I, like, you know, and there were attempts to do that, but I mean, full on kick down the door, gun them all down. You know, maybe they get arrested okay, again, or executed. Boom. You just said it. Okay, Whoa. But killing but Nazi. Right now, Wait, are we not... against killing Nazis here? I, I'm, Totally on board. I'm We're saying against the fact that you're calling everybody right the Republican there, Party Nazis. So then no, you I've made nothing. This is well, what you wanted. I have ah, made I'll, no I'll allegories in this conversation. Okay. <laughs> What's an allegory? I, uh, no, sorry. No comparisons, analogies, none whatsoever. But. Yes. What? Uh, That's the what we're Jews... talking about. We're comparing. Yes, you. No, okay. we're not. No, I, we're. Uh, this is this it. is uh, unrelated. There, uh, the 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 Jews <laughs> might have been successful in preventing yeah, their okay. own extermination. And, and, Wait, do you agree? Wait, do you agree yeah. that while they're facing okay. legal persecution and anti-democratic party is seizing additional power, the Jews 
say, 33, 34, if they had hatched some plot to gun down Hitler, Goebbels, you know, some Nazi upper party meeting, say it's like uh, Glorious Bastards, they get invited to a theater and all this. He is watching Glorious Bastards. Act, something like that. Would that have been wrong? Might have stopped the Holocaust. Morally, and World probably War II. not. But if, again, we're talking about how this can be compared wait, 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 to wait, our current wait, situation. Wait, 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 do you think it would have been... Just, no, Vosh, but, but would, stop, it, would it have been talking. practical? Because it would have killed It doesn't leadership. sound... Okay, if, if you think... If they could have effectively um, wiped out all the Nazi leadership, then maybe practically, yeah, that would have done something. But I don't think right now... We need to be killing Republican the leadership. The you don't want to make yeah. now that you said that is... That's what some progressive group should do to Republican leadership. Yes. Would I even imply that? So, <laughs> how is he so dishonest? <laughs> let's say that. Then what in, are we talking about? Germany let's say for? in Nazi Germany. So, uh, the assassination of political leadership is a very effective way at destabilizing a political movement. Jesus that's that's just so then, make it, so then apply it to our current situation. Well, wait, hold, I'm just trying to figure out what your threshold is for the Nazis. The ones that we can talk about, okay? Mm. So with the Nazis... <laughs> Wait, so Republicans are know, Nazis, uh, or...? We have the precursor to a genocide being constructed, you know? These people are evil, they want Jews dead, blah 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 At what point, you know, because the, the, the alt-fiction, what if, like, a resistance group had killed Hitler before the Holocaust, this is something liberals have been jerking off to for almost a century now. When would it have been acceptable if that assassination had led to destabilization, internal tumult, and then eventually like a restoration of democracy? It would have been messy, I'm sure, but better than World War II. Again, it would- Can you imagine, like, let's just like follow the hypotheticals here. Let's say that there were some people across Europe, especially in Germany, fomenting fear that Jewish people were like trying to control the country or some crazy shit was going on. And then can you imagine if a bunch of Jewish people ran around the country murdering political leaders? Like, what, like what, what, how, how would that even be perceived in Germany? Do you think they'd be like, wow, damn, Jewish guys, good job. You guys were right. There's definitely no, like, there would be, this is like the most insane fucking alternative history take I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, what the fuck? All depend on if, if they pat, like, I'm not familiar with the timeline, but if they passed a law that's hurting, you know, Jewish businesses, like you said, Jewish individuals, and all of a sudden, like, but it's the practical thing. If you could actually magically wipe out all of, all of Nazi leadership, you think it's um, like impossible? Maybe that could be ethical, but do you think it's impossible? Very, to like very difficult for a, a small, small minority to wipe out a governing. Um, well, you do it though. We've got way better guns all the now. time. Of a government seizes power, and then shortly afterwards, the leadership of that government is killed by insurgents or radicals or by a con conflicting faction. And then there's an internal power struggle, and someone else takes power. I don't think anyone hey, all the time in first world countries and developed nations, Vosh. I don't think this is that common of a thing post 1900s, but worse than the nazis could take power that's pretty much like the worst. <laughs> that's about as bad as it gets so whoever would have taken power afterwards pr probably wouldn't have done the holocaust and probably wouldn't have started world war ii or at the very least when those things happened it would have been a, like a well, much less the other context. thing too is um from my understanding insane, you can correct me on this that's hitler the... was much more of a soul leading force that constructed this whole movement around him um and so I do think practically if you could have gotten him, maybe no one else had the specific ambition to do, um, you know, mass genocide. Well, you had a but cult they still of treated them poorly and all those type of things. Uh, we do, but if you took out Trump, which practically... Whoa, 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 whoa. If you... I don't believe in political it, violence. Come on. No, we don't. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Cute okay. one, Vouch. Um, I, I think if, that both of them were about comparable in the extent that, like, there were other political forces that wanted power and through him they were able to achieve it because he was like a populist. My point is, even if like Trump a, decides not to run, we'll say it that way, if he decides not to run in 2024, there's still a whole movement separate from him. There's so many individuals who could lead the current MAGA movement um, well, I'm without just, Trump a part of that. Talking about Whereas, Germany. Right, and so then I'm... Is he actually being, like, bad faith cutesy now? It's actually so obnoxious. God, I fucking hate this guy. This is my worst creation ever. I'm so sorry. Stop it. I'll, I'll stop with the uh, possibly, you know, 
against the TOS language. No, I, no, I no. I, I just because you have to be in the ground game, right? We're in the ground game right now. Right now, we have the benefit of looking back on the Nazis and thinking, oh, maybe if this chess piece had been moved here. But if you were there, I mean, at what point do you get to thinking, wow, the Nazis Worse are than really Hassan? In terms of, like, negativity of rhetoric, yeah, actually, like, hardcore. Like, this is, like, whatever stochastic terrorist bullshit definition we used before, this is about as bad as I think I've ever heard from a lefty before. I don't know if I've ever heard anything as bad as this video. Um... Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't think so. I truly don't think I have. This is pretty insane. <clears throat> the blood of landlords on the street. I think Hassan's saying that is still like a little bit more generalized. Like it's kind of bad, but like that's like Hassan screaming being hyperbolic, I think is a lot different than kind of like a calm, rational two hour video about how we need to prepare for the oncoming genocide and then comparing Republicans to Nazis. Bad, and they're not gonna be dislodged through any kind of civil protest. Um, we should just kill them. At but what you, point? Yes, okay, but you have to understand um, th there would be a point I would need to First of all, it'd be helpful to have been there, but then also I would have to, for this conversation, read a lot more into mm -hmm. the things that were happening to tell you where that yeah. line is. But if we could get away from that, because mm -hmm. what I'm concerned with right now is that here and now in the United States, um, what is it that is all, again, I feel like your language was similar to the language people would maybe use feeling justified in the example we're just talking about in Nazi Germany, but, and it was similar to what we're talking about here in your rhetoric, but then I feel like where you want that rhetoric to go is not at all equal. And so then it's kind of like, okay, well then if all you're saying is, hey, maybe you have the right to bear arms, get a gun just in case. Well, okay, that's kind of boring. I want people- I'm, I'm fine with that. To- But I think all of our political capital and energy and uh, what we should be broadcasting is a- A message a radical of fear revolution that's progressive but and non terror. We're not gonna get the ideal political leader, but we do have the ideal enemy. So we should be focused. I wonder if he would feel proud or scared if one of his followers went out and did a shooting and some Republicans got killed. I wonder if like internally, I wonder if he'd be like, fuck yeah, they did it. Or I wonder if he'd be like, oh shit, like I'm in trouble. I wonder what his feelings would be on that. I'm super curious. On them. This is what the Democrats don't understand. Republicans don't talk about what they want to do. They talk about what the Democrats are doing. They get people motivated through fear. And Democrats only ever talk about their own positions. Oh, well, we want to do this, that. Nobody cares and nobody gives a fuck about politics. So well, they could do care way better with political what? marketing, 100%. With but terror. Also Deserved terror. But this you, isn't but lying. We don't have to lie. They definitely fear mongered about Trump for sure. And not I, even close um, to enough. In a good way. And not maybe not. Bro, enough. I I don't know about that. I think that the uh, the the Democrats' obsession with Trump. I think they did quite a bit, and I don't know if it always played to their benefit. The Democrats were a hardcore hyper fixated on Trump fears and shit. Um, I think Biden ran a better campaign and that he seemed to be a little bit more pro like helping Americans than just like the obsessive focus on Trump. I don't think obsessively focusing on Trump is necessarily in, in the best interest of somebody running. Cause I think Democrats tried that shit for quite a while and it just made you seem like you had like Trump derangement syndrome. But Not they don't just talk about what they do because they don't barely do anything. But Biden didn't even talk about Clarence Thomas, the uh, his yeah. wife. Yes, because Biden is so a far up the uh, like Washington club booty hole that but don't throw uh, Biden under the bus. You don't need to. Of course, he doesn't want to speak out. That's what we've got. Business. Yeah, that's well, that's what we're dealing yeah, with. Right and that now. is so far from where what I'm talking about as well. We're both very far from that. And you're trying to group me in with the no, Bidens. no, no. I'm not saying like you're ideology. just like him. I'm sure you're far farther left than him. I'm only saying that we're not getting the ideal progressive candidate with the ideal progressive message and the ideal progressive party to back it up. All we have right now is this shit. So I can't convince people that Biden's great. I just can't. But I can convince them legitimately that the Republicans are dangerous. 
and I need people to fixate on that, and I need them to be yes. armed, and I need their communities uh, armed. Yeah. No, see, this is, you don't understand, no, because exactly. you're, no, 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 this is American exceptionalism. You are of the- Are you ever scared that Vosh is on the same level or worse than Nick Fuentes, Lawrence Center, and Carlson, Tucker? Uh, same scary shows going. I don't, I think that like, our, politi our current political system is just, I think I said this yesterday when I talked to the Lord, it feels like everybody's just saying everywhere that everybody's trying to kill everybody and that we're all at the edge of like fucking oblivion and that everybody is like every situation is the most important thing in the fucking world and every situation has us like on the precipice like ready to go over I, that just seems like this current state of politics is a little bit fucking insane opinion that it can't happen here it can happen no, i'm here. not of that opinion no. i'm saying what's and the when effect, it, most effective way to prevent it when it does you can do both when it does, there's nothing mutually exclusive. You Republicans, can't because Vosh, the Republicans I, with the armories are also the ones who vote and go to their local school board meetings. They're they are not uh, mutually exclusive. The most but, militant Republicans are the ones who best serve the party. It's not mutually exclusive. And nor am for I. our movement, I'm a you, warrior first for Biden. Of all, you do understand that the right and the left very different in what appeals. Yeah, the um, left is worse. The right understands yeah, that fear and violence are the ways that you control a political uh, and group. Christ. When you say you can do both, it's just like, but we can't because if I'm talking to my audience, and then they are starting to quote shit that Vouch is saying, right? I say this all the time, he is as irrational as I would say she was being. Lauren Southern is correct to point out that like, hey, like you say that my rhetoric is extreme, but what about when like people on the left say this and this and this and this and this and it's like, yeah, fuck, it's true. Like I like anytime I'm in a conversation like that, I have to disavow so much shit from the left immediately. Yeah, it's not good to say that we should fucking, you know, riot and destroy business. Yeah, it's not good that we should defend every fucking thing. Like, yeah, you have to like, having to make all of those concessions is so fucking annoying to me. Because like, I would rather these people just shut the fuck up. Just don't say anything. Like, I, Vosh, I don't need you to do anything, okay? You make my job harder. You make my existence harder, okay? Just go figure out some other shit, okay? Go yeah you know like that that is it's very irritating to me um to, to have to work backwards through so much stuff that other people have said but uh. you know same size as yours um no if i'm talking to my audience and saying hey here's some other people you should go watch that we're trying to you know unite with and I suggest you, a lot of my audience is gonna be like, what the, well, then, some of the stuff. Then let them them die. Then they will perish. Perish. <laughs> Just let them die, bro, chill. They have to be but strong. We're not gonna be in power because now we don't have large enough of a movement to foundationally prevent what's gonna happen if, because we're split among like people who are against violence, you know, in their mind. And then you and that, kind of ilk and then we don't we don't, we don't have you large enough of a movement are to wrong in believing uh, that people and power. rhetoric like me are harmful to our coalition this fear guy didn't die is what got people to vote for biden yes fear but they don't want to feel like they're as bad as the other side everyone feels that way you can you're fear not longer a lot you know no, stop you absolutely should express to people how dangerous the republican party um especially certain elements of, of it are but if your rhetoric sounds a whole lot like theirs and what you want to do now that we know there's a lot of things to be afraid about. This is an aesthetic concern. We're not going to grow a... That's like your entire job. True! Is really I was just going to say, Vosh, you're literally all aesthetics. It's a, it's a fleeting aesthetic concern. What, we sound like them because they th say that they need to go and, what, kill or legally oppress trans people, and I say trans people need to defend themselves against their oppressors? If no a one's liberal, calling to kill. If a, so. if a liberal hears those two things and sounds no difference, they deserve to die. Jesus uh, Christ! You're gonna you die can't. too. You're gonna die too. Listen, because your a liberal wasn't big enough to actually get in power and a prevent liberal it. You're is gonna be a fun worthless. little friend on the side with your guns and you're gonna be shooting at people and you're gonna stop. die. Stop, no, so, stop. I, wonderful. I have been exceptionally patient, but I'm going to lose it now. <laughs> oh no. Do it. You oh, here comes the here comes the rant where he's staring at chat. Okay, guys, I'm about to power up. You're about to get an authentic Vosh rant. Get ready to clip over the clip channel, guys. Huge truth bomb Vosh rant. Big truth bomb Vosh rant coming through right now, guys. Get ready for it. I'm about to drop some crazy truth bombs on this lib. Here we go, guys. Exceptionally patient, but I'm going to lose it now. Let's hear it. Do it. You continue to believe 
that civility politics is a necessary component of marketing to liberals, and you are doing this by perpetuating the fact that liberal civility politics is necessary to speak with them. If your audience- <laughs> Did he just repeat himself? Wait, what? <laughs> continue to believe that civility politics is a necessary component of marketing to liberals, and you are doing this by perpetuating the fact that liberal civility politics is necessary to speak with them. If your audience would be turned off by the belief that you should be able to defend yourself against fascism, change That's your audience. That's not what I'm talking Ch about. No, you don't understand. You don't understand, you understand kid. What you are taking issue with. We don't get it, kid. Are, what you believe is that it harms us in any oh, way. Oh, look, look, there it goes. Slaughter them, sicko mode, notters, you're dead, kiddo. <laughs> enough, enough. <laughs> Were they doing this before? Oh shit, I didn't even see it. It's what is it? Is this his God's City emote? God's City time. Lost it. Patience be lost. Turned off by the belief that you should be able to defend yourself <laughs> against fascism. Change That's your audience. Not what I'm Pop off. About. No, you don't understand. You That's think not at all what, what I'm, you are I'm taking issue with? What you, with you are? What you believe? is that it harms us in any way to engage in the kind of defensive rhetoric that Republicans have been using successfully for decades. You have fallen for Shut it. Up, you liberal. are a psyop. You believe, they're telling you, they're whispering in your ear, yes, don't tell them that we're going to kill them. Don't let them it's believe they need time. to defend themselves against fascism. You would only hurt your movement by doing the thing that we've done successfully. You're falling for it. You're co-intel pro, my friend. Not really. I don't want to be accused of making these accusations sincerely. But it is frustrating. L independence will be moved by the rhetoric they hear. Republicans have moved a lot of people with theirs. It's time for us to wake up it's realize time. We don't have time. Sucked. Our rhetoric is fucked because we don't spend enough time no. fear mongering. <laughs> that is sucked. Um, <laughs> yeah, be, yes, uh, I totally agree with you. No, fear don't does agree drive people to the polls, on, all that type of stuff. So what do we but say? You have to understand that. Uh, I think you would agree that agree to this too. The reason why we don't stay in power is because on the campaign trail, Democrats do a really good job. Of I have never been in power. They, they fear. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, obviously. Um, I'm talking about the current Democratic Party. The reason why they get taken out of power is because they don't actually do a lot or materially improve people's lives a lot or anything. And then, like you mentioned, they're not great at effectively fear mongering. Um, but in the example of the Trump Biden election, there was a lot to fear monger about, obviously, in the middle of COVID and all that type of stuff. And then Biden did have a pretty broad appeal in the message that he was because i know you're saying it's not all fear the reason why uh you're able to get in power is fear plus something that they can also grab onto and if all it all it is is like hey come join our movement because we want to kill them and they want to kill us it's like <laughs> it's not doing anything and i think we've i mean i don't know i feel like we're just running in circles i just to me there yeah, is sorry. no mutually exclusive element here and the only reason people on the left and center are turned off by my messaging is because they haven't been introduced to enough of it yet. So introduce <laughs> it to them more. Get them more familiar with it, okay? It's not my fault that the Democratic Party has made it their mission to coddle and weaken their voters to the greatest possible extent. And now you have millions of Americans, these embarrassing, you know, urbanite liberals whose best response to everything the Republicans do to undermine democracy is we'll vote harder next time. No, you won't. You're not going to get to the voting booths. You're not going to get a chance. No political body is effective or relevant without a plan for how to deal with the end of the democracy that their party exists in. The Republicans are ready and waiting. Where I the guess, fuck are we? You base. We don't base for full people to mode. even have a chance right of sticking now. around Spittin'. for more than a minute. Yes, listening to like that type of rhetoric. Clapper. They have to believe in the great for a clip. Um, Clapper. Like the Everybody foundation clapper. of the building He's that you're building. Because and and by by that I mean they have to believe that. Democracy is going away. I don't think like uh, America's in his chat too. Nice. A good job of expressing that. They have to believe that there's actually this bloodlust on the right, which I, I don't think enough. But that's my point. I don't think there's enough evidence to prove to people 
then you're the a right stooge. Is planning to oh. kill people. No, you keep saying kill you have people. You have a my child's sir? understanding of how genocide takes place. Stooge. I encourage Very smart you. Child, then. I encourage stooge. you, yes, to look up the history of Nazi Germany because look it was it apparent up, from our conversation that you yeah. don't have any historical allegories look for how genocide takes place. Historical allegories. Nice. Good job, stooge. Good job, stooge. Wait, is this kid still in my chat? Where is what, what chat was he in? You you seem to be that, waiting on the you let's kill any people person. bill. Uh, okay. Even in the example where I was up front with, hey, I don't know the timelines, so I can't give you a line. In that case, you also that's a great thing to talk about. You haven't defined where the line is in either cases, really, and how that compares to our, our current situation. The line for what? Violence. Violence started the moment the declaration was signed. What I'm talking about isn't a beginning to violence. You won't it is a beginning to the defense against violence, which has taken place. Oh, Luke we Beasley, he system. donated to me. This is my debate with Vosh. Would love for you to shout out my channel, at Luke Beasley. Oh, hey, are you on, uh, is he still here? Luke Beasley, YouTube. Look out for him in YouTube chat, guys. Built by violence, political violence. When cops mm -hmm. enact laws passed by political agents acting on the behalf of their corporate masters, they are acting violently. What we're talking about is social violence, social violence against minorities, sometimes legitimate, sometimes illegitimate. Is it done through the purview of acceptable legislation or is it done targeted to hit them? It's difficult to say, but what's happening right now with this LGBTQ bill wave across the states is pretty unambiguously unjustified, a very deliberate targeting. There's still 30 minutes left for this. And this is how, this isn't how it starts. This is the middle point. We're okay, well this into is great. it. Let's focus in on this. Let's focus in. So with the LGBTQ stuff, this is my point. If you go to anyone and you read them one of the bills and you say, this is violence, it's time for us to get ready to fight them. No one's going to be on board with that except for a very, very sure. small percentage. Fine. How about the people. legislation that says that there would be attempts to violate the Interstate Commerce, uh, commerce Clause and uh, press charges against any person in the state who left to go to another state to get an abortion? I forget for which abortion. state that was. Um, if you take a look at that, not only can you not get an abortion in your state, you're going to be charged unconstitutionally if you I get one in a different state. So essentially, you get raped uh, and uh, you're pregnant two months. You now have a choice. It's Texas. Texas, apparently. You now have a choice between having an abortion in Texas illegally and hoping. Tom, did what? Have you noticed the gun next to Vosh the whole time? Nice, cute. You don't get caught or getting Luke in YouTube chat. Luke, add me on. Can you figure out how to add me on Discord somehow, my dude? Charged after you do it in a different state. Now, you really think if I walk up to this person and say, hey, they're coming for your rights. They already have taken half of them. Do you really want them to get away with taking the other half? You really think that's not a resonant message? Oh, it 100% is. And then you say, and that's why we need to get ready to fight them in the streets. And then you give them then a... Go, oh, no. Wow. Then you say... As little then you, then you say, hey, they are literally arresting people for miscarriages. You should probably arm yourself. You should go there and probably get to know your neighbors and make sure that you're familiar with your community so that if the cops ever start doing raid checks to make sure that everyone who is registered pregnant still is, you're ready. If you think what I'm talking about right now is illegitimate or unreasonable, the black community did this throughout the 1960s, and they weren't all waving their little hands at the indignity of it all. Plenty of communities have done this. The queer community has done this. The trans community was probably more armed back in the 60s. <laughs> Remember my words right now, okay? You guys are going to be, for reasons that you don't know yet, there's a chance that you guys are going to be ultra-triggered about this Fresh and Fit episode. I'll just say that much, then <laughs> you can speculate than they were now after Stonewall when the very public attack on their um, on their little um, you know shindig uh, uh, became like the subject of national discussion what I'm talking about right now is the behavior adopted by minority groups under threat of persecution all across the world but what you think I'm saying is they need to start goose stepping across Main Street in little packs of 12 with their rifles getting ready to shoot out with cops I'm not they just need to be ready because things are only going to get worse and it doesn't hurt to be safe. 
to know your neighbors, to have a gun and know how to use it, to stockpile ammunition, to stockpile food and water, to stockpile everything that you could need, to be fully aware of the fact that democracies have failed in other countries, and they can fail here too. There's no reason it can't. Nothing can keep it from not happening here. What will you do when democracy falls? The Republicans are ready. They have armories. They have a political party <laughs> that is not only ready for, but currently enacting the end of democracy. What are Democrats? Democrats, oh, we'll get them next time. Democrats, they're not going to do anything. You have to act for yourself. You don't have the central messaging to rely on like they do. When the, when the democracy fails, Republicans will be getting their updates from DeSantis on, like, you know, how many children they should be killing that day. Jesus we Christ. will need to be figuring out how many... <laughs> It's not children. <laughs> we'll be need to figuring out a can, can August make like a super cut of this? Hold on. Maybe possible suggestion for a new video question mark. Is it possible to make a super cut of all the absolutely fucking deranged shit Vosh says in this video? <laughs> Plus maybe my reactions to it because holy Holy fucking shit. Lol face. Okay. Oh my god. And stats uh, without direct leadership. It does. This sounds like a 4chan green text, just in <laughs> pretentious video form. Jesus. Because Democrats are not set up in such a way as to orchestrate that kind of post democratic system. Hmm. I hope you will excuse the hyperbole in there, but the underlying <laughs> message was, yeah. was something I sincerely believe in. Bro, I right. have fucking I, I literally, oh as I God. listen to you, I just start preparing to say what I've said a million times. So I don't feel like there's much else. It doesn't just think, hurt. Yeah. Do you think you... Well, if, you know what doesn't hurt? You do, what the, How you expressed it most of the times in this conversation where you say... Because, again, I don't agree that you could get many people to um, believe in our current situation that that is about to happen then like why the, do um, why does half the republican party think white people are under threat despite there being zero evidence of that fact why would you think white people are under threat when people are on fucking twitter saying insane shit when you've got blm marching all over the place it looks kind of fucking scary with the riots and stuff when you've got like the crt debates that are going on all around the fucking country when you like i, I think that if you're plugged into any amount of culture at all i think you could feel like things are a little bit weird like that is going to be a lot of people's engagement is going to come through your culture like are white people getting shot and killed in the streets not really no but that's not the only way that we make decisions in society it's like it's not like trans people are being murdered all over the country either right so, but you you would never make that same appeal. Well, why do trans people think they're under threat? I mean, you can argue that people are trying to think medical rights and stuff, right? But like, it, it, I, I don't understand how you can totally just unplug people's perceptions of culture and just pretend like you have no reason to be upset or no reason to think that you're getting fucked or whatever. Like, I, I mean, it's, this is, okay, hold on. This is like, if I can impart like one thing of understanding onto you, okay? I've, I've said this a couple times. I, hopefully you understood this, okay? Like, nobody feels things randomly. There are no such things as random thoughts. If people feel things, they feel them for a reason. Now, I guess if you want, you can say that like, you know, all of the all of these feelings are somehow manufactured by the Republican Party. In which case, if you believe that, I can't really help you. I, I will tell you that like political operatives wish they could mind control people as well as you think they can. But there are impressions that are left in our culture, and I think it, I think it's I think it behooves you to take a minute and try to understand like why do people think things are the way they are it's always good to like take a look at that i think well okay but what they're believing what's is, different why uh, do they keep getting would, away with it well they're saying hey because like white people's percentage in america is decreasing over certain number of years that's what they and i have nothing i can point to like. hundreds of state bills they need no evidence at all for their entire party oh, to get behind oh, oh, the idea the that they're that under I, attack no, to be clear i'm not saying like oh they have actual evidence i'm saying what they're fear-mongering about they're not saying uh they're coming to kill white people I they literally they have successfully with no evidence convinced a significant portion of their political party that white people are under threat. If you look at polling done on conservatives, the most oppressed group that they refer to in America is consistently white people and conservatives, like 40 and 50% respectively, whereas right. black people and women are like eight to 9%. They are, they are completely on board. 
tens of millions of Americans. But like, and again, like this is your issue. Like you wouldn't even really necessarily be wrong if you're talking about certain types of women, right? That's not even necessarily a wrong statement, but people will still get up here and they'll act like women are the most oppressed group of people in the country. They're still super, and that's not even really that true anymore. Now we're talking about white women. If you wanna get intersectional about it, right? Black women, sure, not because they're women though, but because they're black or because they're in low socioeconomic status, right? Like, yeah, fuck, American. he's so stupid that they're under attack right now and they do buy guns and they do buy ammo off of what changing demographic statistics which don't hurt any of them but i can point to hundreds of anti-lgbt bills passed in half a year and that to you is not a do you think it's that crazy to think that republicans wouldn't end democracy based on unfounded bullshit i honest to god bro at this point i think either side would end democracy if they could like, I, I, I think they would. I know, uh, hopefully Peace Coast not here to get triggered at me. But like, if Democrats had the option to, like the entire country would be ran by like California and New York. They would abolish the, they'd abolish the Senate or they'd just get rid of the filibuster. They would ax the electoral college and they would probably reapportion seats in the house to make it so that the most populous states, which are all like left leaning, and then they would pack the courts. All the states that are the most populous would be having all of the votes deciding federal legislation. And basically like any small like red state would be fucked. That would be ideally how progressives, now most Democrats aren't afraid of that, but progressives would absolutely go that route. And they go, oh, well, bro, I don't want one guy in Wyoming to have the same amount of voting power as 12 people in fucking California, bro. It's only fair that California and, and these other massive blue states get to dictate federal legislation for the entire fucking country and get to choose the president every single time. Like that's, I, I, I think that is the case, but you know, Destiny, I think that's a little different though. Okay, maybe. <laughs> enough to convince a liberal that they're under threat? <laughs> Sorry, I read something. I just looked down. Um, I agree they're under threat, 100%. We both agree on that. You keep saying stuff and then it, I guess it's well, just we need more to convince them and they need to that. arm themselves like right, Republicans and I, have. I think our two main components, I probably disagree with you on how you message, mess <laughs> I message up. the way or the extent to which they're under threat because I think giving a really honest factual kind of laying out of what's going on and expressing that to people and then saying this is what we want to do is the way to do it I think I think I'm saying factual. that I think you're factual but I'm saying like the average even person on a liberal who hears see what they're doing to these different groups, they're about to start killing them. Uh, they want us all dead. I think most people go, oh, okay, well, he's yeah. kind of like the other people who- Why does the average conservative suspected. go for it then? Why does the average conservative require they don't so believe little? That. If they don't believe that um, liberals are going to kill them. They, the belief that the liberal establishment is going to kill them is literally a mainstream Republican belief. Wait, that, that, that it's gonna kill them? I don't know if they necessarily believe that one, Vouch, but. Like QAnon being one thing at all, but like the idea that like, the, literally like conservatives have long said stuff like it, they want you dead. Least, I am borrowing oh, their oh. messaging. I'm just right when I use it. Okay. And I they mean, believe it and they like, act on it. Right. Why are liberals so weak? Why are they unwilling to act righteously where Republicans were for less evidence act uh, uh, unrighteously? Why are they so much more active and willing, even when they're wrong to do but so? But they're successful for their movement because they never- Can you justify why Dakota gets four senators and California gets two? Wait, I was about to call you a dumb fuck, but are you talking about North and South Dakota? <laughs> explicitly, uh, let the- Yeah, they do. Go on talk radio. They the say more... insane shit on talk radio. Wild shit. There's less restriction, fewer restrictions there when it comes to what about uh, Carolina? You know True. what you can get away with. They say wild shit. So then, um, do you feel that your that Fox, your you are talk radio job is different from ever? Like, I guess when I say stuff, it's um, assuming Vosh that I would want. What'd you say? Call me Vosh Limbaugh. True. <laughs> exactly. Or is that no? Like, Unironically you play true. A yes. Role in, uh, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. In our movement, but it not being 
everyone's role? Or do you genuinely believe like what you um, say, at least in the videos that we're kind of responding to, is something that pretty much everyone on the left should be advocating for? I don't think everyone can advocate for it or should advocate for it the way that I do. But I think like he the general messaging that I'm disseminating about getting ready and preparing and owning a gun and knowing your neighborhood and stuff, I think that every single person who is like farther left than Biden should be doing that on their messaging. Disseminate, yes. Mm -hmm. I want to see that shit on MSNBC. I know I won't, but... Yeah, because I, I, there, there are tons of people the second that they... They're on board. I mean, they would even get on board with Bernie, the but the second they see they hate violence... Guns. They're spooked by guns. Another reason I right, hate so Democrats... Right, so we're just saying, hey, just in case uh, is why you hate what? Another reason I hate Democrats. It's like they've oh. been spending the past half century deliberately grooming their voter constituency into being the weakest, most vulnerable to fascist group of babies in the universe. Base, take vouch. Oh my God, base. Lots of problems. Oh my God, base. Where's the chat? Party, but um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold I on. I think you maybe just don't. Hold if on. you just want like your little, your kind of group of people to be ready. Everyone. I don't know what it it's delay is. Fuck. Well, it won't. Then okay, I guess that's what. And we no didn't try harder. Than no. I didn't give him the base. Fuck. I would be a better chatter than these losers. No wonder he doesn't like his chat. Into Lord, content creation and, and say this. And I'm saying I'm in content creation. I'm saying that if you you have an, a shorter path from where we are now to winning power than getting all of these liberals to want to do, do a violent revolution. They're, you can do both. You and I didn't say violent revolution. I just said neighborhood defense. You said that a bunch of times. You know that. Not in this convo. Isn't I haven't like used the, old, the word. No. Oh yeah, maybe not in this combo. And re realistically, by the way, you know, in terms of actual insurrectionary efforts, like to, to put aside all the memeing, I don't actually think they're really possible. Um, obviously, like, you know, Jan 6 aside, the idea of any coordinated political violence actually like cutting the head off of a political establishment in America would be basically impossible. It's just not something that can really be done. Also, there are so many subsidiaries and backup systems to like ensure that the presidency would continue moving forward that it wouldn't actually like it would be largely ineffective. The most useful thing that you could actually get armed leftists and liberals to do would be to hold Wait, out. Wait, what is this? This man called the Buffalo shooter a communist, which was false based on info out already? Wait, I never said the guy was a communist. I said the guy was a communist before becoming a far right person, but that's true. I'm almost positive. I read, I feel like I actually read that in his um, manifesto. There was a paragraph where he talked about how, did he say from 12 to 14? 12 to 16, I think he said it was a communist, and then 16, 17, 18, in two years, he started to move further and further to the right as he was reading 4chan posts. They're just, it's just, a, it's just a blatant lie. Anyone else getting bored of destiny? Like, people think talking fast equals being smart. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to employ the more eloquent uh, use. Like, well, come on, dude. People need to be posting quotes of me more instead of just making shit up, but. Our communities when civil fighting takes place between militia groups and local, um, local neighborhoods um, following any kind of conflict between federal and state legislation. So the best example of this would be if the federal government passes some radically oppressive rule that a progressive state government doesn't want to follow, and there's conflict within and without the state as to whether or not that law will actually be followed, that conflict will lead to pockets of insurrectionary activity and lawlessness where right-wing groups, militias, and probably cops will work together in order to effectively secure areas under like de facto martial law. And in those environments, Environments, it is kill or be killed. And in those environments, I hope my people have guns. And by my people, I mean 250 million Americans who don't vote red. That's mostly what I'm talking about. Base. Whether or not they win in those pockets will base. play a large role in who oh, wins over the state speech. government. And whether base. or not the state government succeeds in resisting the federal will will determine whether or not some broader action has to be taken, like sending in the military. But the military is majority Democrat which makes me think they would try to stay on the side of any internal conflict, plus sending U.S. troops to resolve internal disputes. Space, 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 we got a few of them. Politically, that's what I'm really talking about. So that, so that right there, that's the actual, like, in my mind, loosely what usefulness there might be to being defensive um, in, the, in the context of, like, the end of democracy here in the States. Does that make sense? Based. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Makes sense. God, that makes sense. fucking based. I, honestly, I understand. I've talked to Let's a lot of go. people who, uh, 
you know, understand that for a while the gun kind of balance was way tipped in the Republicans' direction just because that's kind of a big Republican thing and guns, really. And apparently gun ownership among liberals, I think, has gone among up a lot us? Oh, recently. Oh, oh, and oh. Hell yeah, brother. It's not, like, I, not something I'm hugely against. I think the only, to kind of summarize the whole Bro, conversation, is you were saying, hey, I feel like we're headed towards this. And to be prepared for that, this is the rhetoric I need to use. And I'm saying, hey, I feel like we could prevent this uh but we won't be able to if people think our movement represents or why doesn't this kid understand that he's a massive kind of fucking summary. loser and you think okay. you know you're a little vouch a little whistle is going to lead us into the Good. revolution i think times. the idea that militant groups have been electorally harmful to their general side in america have largely been overstated historically true they said that about the black panther party yeah, as and well. the black panthers and were, were based because they're black course, and i'm uh, white and so. i need all the black credit um, i just because my name is bosh like, I, they, they said the same thing with the Black Panther Party, that their militancy was going to throw people off the civil rights movement and was going to lead to more conservatives and anti-civil rights legislation fear-mongering. And they were wrong. Uh, it turns out that racists who didn't want the civil rights movement to pass <laughs> also would just accuse Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. of being militant. They didn't care. You know, the whole civility thing was just uh, a mirage thrown up by uh, people concerned trolling uh, or, or well-meaning liberals, who, of course, Martin Luther King roasted in his uh, letter from a Birmingham jail. Um, oh, my the God. Whole, the one thing Martin Luther King wrote. Thank God he wrote that uh, letter. People concerned trolling uh, or, or well-meaning liberals, who, of course, Martin Luther King roasted in his uh, letter Boom from roasted. a Birmingham jail. Um, the whole, you know, putting a timetable... But that was an issue, freedom. right? You know, the whole... <laughs> True. Well, don't maybe... you think that if MLK's rhetoric was, like, the same as, you know, that certain aspects of the Black Panthers, then he never would have rose to prominence like he did? Because part of the reason he was so effective at pressuring, um, like, LBJ and stuff is because he had a larger movement behind him than just, like... A sliver of the population. I agree. He had a, a larger movement, which included people like me. Diversity of tactics. You need to have people like MLK, who are politicians, and he was certainly, at least in his affect, capable of delivering messages in a steady, calm, and uh, even-handed way. And you need people who put the vice on. The Republicans understand this again because there are vice crazy ass QAnon yes. talks with a disproportionate amount of power. But they're not the ones who write the legislation within the party. That's um, what corporations and likewise, do. <laughs> I think that we need people who are, you know, strong advocates of, you know, political togetherness. And I think that we need people who who put the squeeze on a little bit. And I think that right now the Democrats are 100% in category A and 0% in category B. And I think that it should be, you know, I don't know, I don't know, 50 50 or 70 30. It, it has to be something that's not 100 and 0. Mm, well, Bosch moment based. Okay. Hello. I, I like do appreciate the conversation, been... by the way, even if it got heated. It's been a very good one. Oh, no, it's been awesome. I love it. Uh, can I ask like a completely random, possibly bothersome question? Sure. It's completely off topic. When are you going to so talk to Destiny? I also watch your good friend Destiny. Oh, shit. Course. Wait, I was just um, kidding. And one of the people he's been bringing on a lot is this uh, oh, Mr. No. Girl character. Oh, mm -hmm. I thought he was going to say Lawrence Southern. Oh, I was waiting for that. He brings in Lawrence Southern, and a lot of people don't like her stochastic terrorism. Don't you think you do the same thing? That would have been the fucking killer question. Fuck. And I saw you did that debate with him. Mm -hmm. What? I'm really confused. Uh-oh. I feel like I'm going crazy. when I'll, He's like, you know, just popping off. Uh-oh. Getting more popular. Bosh is about to lose Talking it. to Destiny line. Usually Destiny seems... Oh, no. I probably think he's more reasonable than you think he is, but... Um, but... To me, Mr. Girl is so obviously like, I don't know, promoting some bizarre ideas. Like whenever y'all had your debate and it was like, hey, under the umbrella of we're having an open conversation about people possibly being attracted to um, other people who are under the somewhat arbitrary line we've drawn is like mm -hmm. the legal age or mm -hmm. something. Bosh and he used that it. as a justification to get a little bit descriptively creepy and stuff about like hey let's fantasize about young girls <sighs> careful but he's not being treated like that and it's confusing me have you experienced that at all because i know you didn't have the best thing or have you gotten more fond of him 
Uh, <laughs> I definitely would put it that way. I haven't really consumed any content of his or seen him at all outside of a video done Mr. Lalanda, old man Lalanda or something like that, which talked about how he's like an abuser to his girlfriend and a pedophile. He watched the crazy fucking hit piece video? Vouch, come on. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. I can't show this on screen without doxing somebody. Okay, hold on. Some pe okay. Some people maybe either they misinterpreted my tweet, or I think I now that I'm looking at this in the future, I can see maybe how this is being could be read in two ways. So, when people were blaming Lauren Southern for the recent shooter, I tweeted out in sarcastic agreement. I said, agreed to be honest, not enough people are talking about Lauren's 2017 video, Lauren's 2017 deleted video, and then I put in quotes, when the shooter was a commie, and then end quote, uh, or end parenthesis, and too many people are focusing on Tucker Carlson pushing great replacement for the past three years. When I said that when the shooter was a commie, I meant that literally in 2017, that's when the shooter was a commie. Not like the shooter is a commie, but I don't know if people didn't read the any of the manifesto or know that he was a commie in 20. But I guess, I guess maybe somebody read that and they thought that I, I was saying that the shooter was a commie. Or, but I, now I don't know if it's like if it's if it's a way that you could theoretically read that tweet or if it's like a bad faith interpretation. I don't know. When can I have two meetings? Yeah, I think when is do, could do two different things there technically file and bloody blah, blah, blah um i don't really know the specifics the impression that i get of him old man laundry thank you is that he's a legitimately bad person in a bunch of ways um but he's not stupid and he knows that he can monetize that by leaning into it enough that his behavior comes across as self-referential and ironic. So it's a really common strat for like sexist people to like, they actually do kind of dislike women, but they'll make like over the top sexist jokes in a way where it's like, oh, it's a joke, obviously. But, you know, well, does he actually think like half of that or whatever with him? I don't know what the relationship is between X and Y, but it's basically just a rehash of standard conservative. I'm joking. I'm not joking. Shit. He comes across. How as is that conservative? <laughs> what? Do conservatives own humor in Vaj's world or what does that even mean? Like really really weird to me um but he, he he seems to be pretty genuinely like a pretty scummy person so yeah i don't know yeah okay good because <laughs> uh yeah i think there's this new wave of hey there's a lot of these social norms that are and i and a lot of this is good like we've talked to you know we've talked about you've talked about and i've talked about um a lot of the stuff around gender like is this all necessary all of these boxes and gates that we form uh so then there's especially on the left, kind of a movement of let's question norms and expectations and push the envelope a little bit. And it's interesting because that's all what kind of his thing is, is, hey, you know how everyone's really uncomfortable with pedophilia? Well, let's talk about it. And like, we should be able oh, to be dude, open about Vosh is ready to hang and up. Oh my me, God. Like, yeah, we should without having to get into like a weird fantasy thing. So anyways, okay, that makes me feel good. Um, no, you're, you're not alone in feeling that way. Um, I do, I mean, the, the whole, it's, it, again, it's basically like the I'm just asking questions, right? So like when neo-Nazis want to advocate for their positions, instead of like outright stating anything normatively convincing, they'll just ask like leading questions that try to bait you into certain like discussions where you have to like talk about their moral premises without them having to assume any of the positions you have to argue against to express your opinion. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty standard stuff. I don't know. It's it's pretty weird. We've we've done this song and dance before with Amos Yee back in like 2018. <laughs> the comparison. Are you for that? No. You look younger than me. He was he's a Singaporean <laughs> guy. He was friends with Sargons of Sargon of Akkad. He was a ah. not pedophile who very adamantly argued about how the age of consent was oppressive or whatever the fuck. And then he got arrested. You don't even know what you don't even know what Amos Yee argued about, dude. How can you even begin to make these fucking statements, bro? You don't even know what he was talking about. He didn't argue that the age of consent was oppressive. He argued that he literally wanted to get rid of it. He wanted to 100% abolish the age of consent. You can't really compare Amos Yee to Mr. Girl. They're not even remotely similar, bro. Or CP, like a year ago or something. So. Yeah. Oh, and did he talk to Destiny? Yes, funnily, Destiny yeah, okay. was one of the people who said, this that. is bullshit. The skeptics are giving cover to this pedophile. 
by being buddy buddy with him and not taking the argument seriously, I will take the argument seriously. So, and, and right, and, okay, yeah. yeah, but that's because Amosi was actually advocating for children to be fucked at any age. Amosi thought it was possible to have a responsible sexual relationship with a zero year old child. I'm not exaggerating. You can go back and watch the debates. You can't compare him with Mr. Girl, or I guess Vosh can. Vosh can do anything. You know, the, 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 gra the, ga the grand scales of reality, you know, tilt um, uh, ever, ever more um, in, in someone's favor, not mine, certainly. Uh, but yeah, anyway, anyway, um, I, uh, I do like appreciate the, the convo. Yeah. All right, there we go. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much, sir. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye. I feel like you guys were too mean. I actually enjoyed that conversation a lot. I also know there are going to be people in my chat who disagree with my perspective, so I'm happy to answer questions from anyone who disagrees with me. Um, obviously, stuff like this, uh, you know, conversations like this, always come across as a little bit... Um, Psychopathic? It? Um, a little bit speculative. Hey, Shu. A little bit speculative and a little bit um, kind of abstract in a LARPy way. Um, it's just, I, I feel like the idea that something like that could never happen here is really just a product of American exceptionalism because it totally, totally can. You know, not only, not only has America come very close before, but we, you know, we, we inspired the Nazis and our eugenicist prescriptions. There were huge supporters of, of fascism in America before World War II. Um, True. you know, of course, like stuff like this can happen here. And, um, I really, really think it's, it's politically important for everyone with a good perspective, you know, to, 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 to realize, like to understand, like, yeah, I want to solve this within a, a democracy. Uh, but if democracy should fall, Something we need to be ready for that. It's right sort now, of true for everybody saying that it's actually correct and it's sort of true. Are you telling me a sizable part of the United States population was in support of fascism, or there was like one march at one place one time with a group of fascists? Which because I'll notice at leftists, there's some. I wish I could remember what it was. Was it in the 30s or 40s? There was like one march one time of like neo Nazis or somebody in the United States. And people were like, look at that huge element of Nazism, of fascism in the United States. And then it's like, okay, well then I guess we had a ton of socialist movements too because there were a few like Black Panther marches or whatever. Like. No eugenics specifically? Okay. Oh, our other political party is anti-democracy, so... Wait, what is, what is White saying? Wait, SDL wants to talk? Chilean leftist chatter wants to talk to you? No, if they want anything to say, just DM... Just DM it to me on Discord, and I'll just, um... And I'll just read it. Based. What did SDL want to talk about? My love of guns? Do you think you might have jumped the gun a little, getting down his throat, ascribing every lib position to him? It felt like for a lot of the convo you were attacking him for positions he hadn't expressed just because you labeled him lib. The only positions that I ascribed to him were about his, um, his, his, his sort of aversion to the acknowledgement of violence as a, as a sort of pre-existing or omnipresent factor. Um, and, and his, like, just aversion to it rhetorically. It just comes across as civility politics to me. The threat we face is very, very real. And I want it known, by the way, you know, it's not like the fascists would like... Okay, don't care. 